most storied high school football venues in the state of Georgia, the Brickyard in Thompson, home to legends and champions. We can talk about the finished product, but do we want to keep it that way? That's, that, that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to sustain this. And it's going to take some hard work, it's going to take some dedication, and all of those types of things to keep us at the top. Tonight, Thompson continues its state title defense in the region opener against Laney. It's going to be a great atmosphere. It's going to be great for fans. It's going to be great for the alumni. It's going to be great for us, uh, you know, to get be able to play high school football, big time football on TV, you know, at a you know really good team that we're playing. It's week five of Game Night Live. Welcome to Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, John Hart and Ashley Brown. We could not have painted a more perfect picture for high school football on a mid-September night and one of the most perfect venues for high school football in the state of Georgia, the Brickyard in Thompson Luther Welsh Field, where the Thompson Bulldogs have played since 1941. But only six times have they taken the field as defending state champions as they do. And once again tonight, as Game Night Live rolls into week five with the Laney Wildcats coming in at one, one, and one against the top-ranked Thompson Bulldogs, the top-ranked team in Class 2A in the state of Georgia coming in at 2 and one John Hart joined, as always, by Ashley Brown. And, and A.B., listening to your radio show last night, not only is Thompson the number one ranked team in the state, but you have this as a, a matchup of two of the top eight teams in our area. Yeah, I think so. I, I, you know, Thompson obviously played a very good Burke County team and lost in week one, but they're – the rest of the way, people are going to have a tough time beating Thompson. Uh, and I think Laney is a good football team. They get better this week, or really last week, because Javaris Harris, a kid who was uh, trying to get eligible uh, some, you know, with some academic stuff, he's eligible. He played a half game last week, had an interception. He's a big-time playmaker on both sides of the ball. He's back in the fold. And remember, last year, Laney only lost to Thompson by one point, 15 to 14. Uh, you know, so I think this could be a great game, and I think both these teams are pretty solid football teams. Yeah, that game last year was a game divided over two different days, a couple of weeks apart, actually, due to weather. Uh, we'll dive into all of that as we move along, but first let's get you those four keys to the game. Yeah, let's start with Thompson. I think they need to just pack the line and force Laney to try and throw the football. They, it, The passing game was non-existent when we saw him earlier this year against Hepsiba, and also come out fired up and ready to play. The times where I've seen Thompson struggle, they've got the talent. It's just they seem to come out a little flat sometimes and they've got to come out ready to go here in the front of their home field, uh, home crowd. And then for Laney, mistake-free football. You've got to force some turnovers. You can't beat yourself. You're playing a very good team. And then I think they've got to find a second option for C.J. Holmes. And guess what? They may have done it because uh, Javaris Harris is now eligible. So I think they may have found that second option. Love the beware of dog uh, <laughs> tag on uh, number five, Jacaeus Jones for Thompson. Down to the field for the coin toss. If y'all can't control it, we will. Know how? Start throwing flags, start sitting out to the parking lot. All right? Going to be 22 of y'all out here running around, ain't but six of us officiating. Y'all already know y'all run faster than we do. We can do the best we can, all right? I make y'all the promise tonight. I won't throw any touchdown passes. Y'all can't throw no flags. Fair enough? All right, got a coin, got a head, and a tail. Y'all the visitors, y'all get the caller. What you got? Heads. Call heads. heads. There's a head. You have won the toss. You have the option to kick the ball, receive the ball, defend the goal, or defer your children to the second half. Y'all want the rock, right? Which way y'all kicking it? Or y'all put y'all backs over here? Laney has won the toss and will defer the choice. All right, guys, shake hands, bring your teams out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> So Laney wins the toss and defers to the second half, which means we will get a look at this high-powered Thompson offense to begin 
Week five of Game Night Live. Thompson again comes in at two and one. Uh, just that one loss to Burke County to start the season. And A.B., uh, these are two head coaches. Michael Youngblood coming off his first state championship and, 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 and really has the, is the talk of this town. Yeah, no doubt about it. 47-19 uh, and 19 overall. And, of course, that state title last year that had the Thompson fans raving. And, look, he had to take over a team that was a little bit uh, down on their luck. And he certainly turned it around. He was a two-time national champion as a player at Georgia Southern and was an outstanding high school player that I covered back in my early days when he was at Burke County. On the other side of the field, though, it's Ronnie Baker. He's in his third season at Laney. And, hey, 15-9-1 at Laney. They've made the playoffs in each of his first two seasons. He's a former college assistant and was a three-sport star as a, in his own right as a player back in his playing days. Both teams have taken the field. The Wildcats will kick off to the Bulldogs next on Game Night Live. Welcome back to the Brickyard Game Night Live. I'm Kira Goldstein, your sideline reporter. I got a chance to talk to both of these coaches going into the week, and they both had very different ideas on what are going to be the keys to the game. Obviously, Laney has a new quarterback. And then we take a look at Thompson. They're coming off a state championship. They've been really working on effort. Coach Youngblood said effort has been big with his guys. He's really been working on thinking when they're tired and making sure that they understand different game situations. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. We know that it's fun on Friday nights. We know that both coaches love to be here. And obviously, the Brickyard is an incredible environment. So we're getting ready for kickoff, and we're looking forward to it. For now, we're going to send it up to John and Avery. Take it away, guys. Kira, thanks. Our statistician, Nathan Edwards, also up here in the booth with us. 20th meeting all time between these two teams, and it is, to say the least, A.B. been a, a lopsided uh, a matchup over the years. Thompson leads the all-time series 18-1, to one, uh, including that very close matchup you mentioned a year ago. The only laney win, you got to go all the way back to 1987, and away we go. And the Bulldogs will set up shop at the 33-yard line, and we'll get our first look at this high-powered offense averaging 259 yards on the ground per game. Well, and keep in mind, John, that a lot of teams have a lopsided record against Thompson over the years, not just Laney. Uh, this Thompson program, certainly proud. They had the state championships back in the 60s. They got two more in the 80s, and, of course, they've picked up two since then uh, as well. So this is a, a tradition-rich program that seems to produce – Great team after great team. Jacaeus Jones, the quarterback, 194 yards through the air this year. He's thrown three, three touchdowns, has thrown three interceptions, also has 150 on the ground with a couple of scores. So he can do it both ways. And he'll start with three wideouts to the right. And he'll start with his arm. And it's going to be a flag, pass interference on the Wildcats right off the bat. Yeah, that was a no-doubter there on Angus Myrick, a pass interference. He was uh, covering uh, Tarikas Jones and just simply knocked him down as Jones going for the ball. They went for the deep ball late, and that was a great throw by Jones. I will say this. He is a better thrower this year than what I've seen. I know he's got a couple of picks, but he threw three, picks, or three uh, touchdowns last week. He looked good throwing the ball in the Burke County game. Uh, and I, he just looks more confident throwing the football this year than he did a year ago to me. And let's be honest, last year, of course, they, they rested John Tavius Curry, our all CSRA player of the year a year ago. But he could just turn around and hand it off to an, any number of backs. Yeah, yeah, Jordan Lane, ago. Anthony Jeffrey. And by the way, Jeffrey and Lane are back this year. They did lose uh, John Tavis, of course, the state player of the year. But a lot of weapons. New set of downs from the tops at 47. Speaking of, Trey Trey Jeffrey. Across midfield and out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Yeah, I love this kid. I, I just, I think, you know, Thompson does like to spread the wealth and rest their guys, but I think when the chips are down and, and it comes playoff time, and you, you're going to see him get the hand that carries the way Curry did last year. He's only a junior, really talented kid. There's a look at the Thompson starting lineup. Jordan Lane and Jeffrey are the two big guns as far as playmakers, along with the quarterback. Jones. Jeffrey averaging nine per carry this year. That was 12 on the first down pickup. And now back to the air is Jones. And another completion. And just short of a first down, bring up second and one. Yeah, and Jones. that was to Kasai Jones. Kasai Jones is Jacaeus Jones' favorite target. 66 yards receiving. This is a Thompson team that throws it about once for every two times they run it. 
Second and one. And another first down for the Bulldogs inside the 30. Yeah, Jeffrey just following one of his big guys up front. I believe that time it was big number 52 he got behind. That is Markeven uh, Rogers. If you, you see Jeffrey there, he's short in stature. He's got that low center, center of gravity, but he is built like a bowling ball. I mean, he, those the thighs like Saquon Barkley, just a big, you know, a strong kid in that short stature. Falcons fans might think of uh, Michael Turner. There you go. Yep. Good, good, uh, 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 you know, comparison for sure. First attempt from the 28, and it's Jeffrey. He's got a first down. He's got a lot more inside the Murphy Auto Group red zone, inside the 10 to the four yard line. Like I said, the only thing I think holding this kid back from getting 2,000 yards this year is carries. Because when he carries the football, big things happen. Like you said, he's averaging nine yards a carry this season and uh, probably more than that so far tonight. Marked him out at the six. Different so first and goal from the six. Yeah, different quarterback in. It's Roberts, and he's going to get the score. Well, they made that look easy. Yeah, Jameer Roberts, they'll bring him in. He was in last play as well. They'll bring him in as a run, kind of a run option, kind of a thumper. He's more of a hard, you know, in, interior runner. Really good defensive player as well. And that, that, they made that one look easy, like you said, John. Yeah, they met, went 68 yards in a minute 44 to take the lead. And now Samuel Emerson on for the point after. And I know, John, one thing, Nathan and I were talking about this before the game, I know you're big on the natural field, the natural grass. Indeed. I will say it looks beautiful out here tonight. Their, their ground crew has done a phenomenal job. Emerson is now 9 of 10 on PATs. You know who else is a big fan of a natural turf or a natural grass right now? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Did you, hear the, did you hear the story of who did the surgery on Rodgers? Yes. How crazy is that? So Aaron Rodgers had his Achilles, of course, situation. We all know about that. In 2008, 15 years ago, when Tom Brady tore his ACL, this surgeon in Los Angeles did it. Instead of the people in Massachusetts where they've got a huge medical community, he went there, and then when Kobe tore his uh, Achilles, ruptured his Achilles, the same surgeon did it, and it's the same surgeon that Aaron Rodgers shows. That guy got a big-time plug if he, as if he needed it <laughs> last, <laughs> night, last night on Monday Night Football. Yeah, I'm sure he's doing just fine. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, the Bulldogs, like a knife through butter on the opening drive. Yeah, that, they made that look really easy. No real big plays, just a, a bunch of – Nice runs mixed in with a pass. They did get the pass interference penalty on the first play, but that was, you know, 15 yards. They just marched right down the field. So if Laney can come up with an answer here. They do have two outstanding playmakers in C.J. Holmes and Javaris Harris. And it is C.J. Holmes on the return and still on his feet across the 30. Stood up right at the 30, and that's where the Wildcats will take over and yeah so now we get our first look at Holmes who is a playmaker at a couple of scores we saw in game night live uh, a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago to be exact when we saw these Wildcats against Hepzibah and and Holmes is really just a great player like he can you can put him at quarterback he's not a thrower more a runner you put him at running back you put him at receiver that is where he made his biggest impact early on when he first uh, you know joined the varsity here at Laney was as a receiver uh, and Javaris Harris though he is the new player like I said he's a kid it was a is a natural receiver. They've got him playing quarterback as well. But they, they like to run the football. They're not going to throw it a ton. Harris is number five if you want to keep an eye on him. And it will be Harris on the direct snap. And you see the talent on the first snap of the year for him, six yards on the pickup. Yeah, last year as a junior at Greene County, he had 55 catches for over 900 yards receiving. Um, and, they, you know, you see him there at the quarterback spot. They'll interchange him along with uh, C.J. Uh, Holmes as well. But the luxury is when he's at quarterback, they can have Holmes as a receiver or a running back in a different, uh, you know, part of the game. And they can do the same when Holmes is at quarterback. Put Harris right at receiver. Wildcats do have a lot of weapons. The problem they face is this is a Thompson defense. As Harris will be just shy of the first down. Going to bring up third and probably two. The Thompson defense has only allowed seven points in the last month, basically. And then last year, of course, ran off that six-week stretch where they give up nine points in six games. Yeah, and, you know, again, like I said, the Thompson teams, 
the times I've seen them where they've struggled, it's it wasn't the talent level. It just seems like they were flat. You know, when they come ready to play, they are tough to beat. But here's going to be a first down run and a nice run as he's thrown out of bounds. Harris, and did we see a flag? I don't no. think so. Thrown out of bounds by Tarikas Jones. Life Lake of Georgia first down. We saw this at the beginning of the Hepsipa game. They're going to run that QB power over and over and over yeah. until you prove you can stop yeah. it. Well, it's what Washington County does. Jefferson County that, you know, did it for a long, long time. We do have a different quarterback in there now, and I think that is – Jay, is that – Number 11 is in That's there Daggett, who That's we saw Daggett. a lot yeah. against Hepzibah. Yeah. On the offense, five yard penalty, replay down. To be successful in high school football, you don't need all these formations. You don't need all these fancy yeah. shifts. You don't need all these yeah. fancy motions. If you can get three yards every single time, just Well, the difference them down is, the though, when you're playing a good team and you've got to mix it up a little, obviously last year Laney had, you know, Keyshawn Sanders and they could throw the ball a little bit better but they don't have much of a passing game. But they've got athletes, and they've got a good front line. I will say this. Laney's got a decent front line. Daggett. Nice run. Great run. Tough run. So you see the three athletes. We've seen them now. You, you see that they've got that, and they've got a decent front line, and that's a recipe for success. Again, this team – Thompson won the state title, and this team took them to the very end, lost 15 to 14 a year ago. So the Wildcats into Thompson territory for the first time tonight at the 46-yard line after a pickup of seven from Daggett. Flaney's going to pull off the win tonight. No, they, they cannot have the penalties they had. Uh, last yeah, time one of my keys to the game. Yeah. You can't you mistake free football, and you've got to maybe force a turnover or two. Because, again, Thompson's offense is high-powered. They're tough to stop because they are a dual threat. They can throw and run, whereas Laney's kind of one-dimensional. Daggett again. He'll have the first down at the 42-yard line. Yeah, Jameer Roberts came flying in from the near side and almost made that play from, from behind, but Daggett was able to kind of wrestle away from him, pick up some decent yardage. So we wondered how Laney would respond to that opening drive by Thompson. So far, so good. Yeah. It's got to be frustrating as a defensive player. You know what's coming, and you still can't stop it. Yep. Again, when you've got a good line and you've got a couple of playmakers, I mean, because, again, I think people – don't for, that they beat Hepzibah, right? Hepzibah's a good football team. I think Telly Johnson, you could argue, maybe the best player in the area all around. And they beat Hepzibah. And I, I think people are going to realize as the season goes forward, that's not a bad Hepzibah team. And they're very big up front. And Laney was able to uh, get the win in that game. Flag flies. Yeah. And the Cats will back up five. Yeah, again, this is what they cannot do. because, And we saw it. Remember, they Ball's did a, a lot of what penalties in that Hepzibah game as well. Mentioned Laney 1-1-1 one, one, and 1 coming in. That one tie was a week ago at First Presbyterian. 44-44. <laughs> Wild game. Think that was entertaining to watch? Wild game. So they can put some points on the board. <laughs> on first and 15, Daggett trying to make something out of nothing. Finally twisted down. And Mari McAllister, the big man in the middle for Thompson. Four tackles for loss this year, three and a half sacks. He is a force in the middle. Well, and this is not a short drive, by the way, for the Lady Faithful. They've got a decent crowd over there that drove, to, made the drive to Thompson to watch their squad. Well, this is one of the larger visitors sections you'll yeah. see. Oh, it uh, is. In it high is. school the, football. It's, so. it's probably the largest that we see all year. Yeah, if you count the and section you've got in the, the end And you've got the end zone yeah. section. And that is, yeah, so in a normal stadium, it's gonna, it would be almost packed. Yep. But this, yeah. this thing, I mean, they, the bleachers go the length of the field, which you don't see at many stadiums, not on the visitor side at least. Line to make is the Thompson 32-yard line. And this time, Joe, uh, uh, it was Harris. Harris threw it, yeah. will make his first throwing attempt of the game. It looked like he was kind of throwing a back shoulder throw, and Holmes just never turned around. And now they're pointing at each other, you know, trying to get it get together. And again, even yeah, with him just being eligible, sure, there'll be some growing pains. And even when he was at Laney back, because he started his career at Laney, even he was there, he's ineligible because uh, during the summer he had played with a with a 
a, co a coach got a job at Laney that he played for in the summer. It was a real weird situation. Uh, but the kid's back on the field now, and he's a player. There's no question. Going to let him try to throw again. A little bit of time. Make some time for himself. Floats one up, and it is incomplete. He intended for Vincent Carter. Yeah, trying to go to Carter. The coverage there by number 15, Roderick Jackson. This one was really lucky, though, because it was kind of thrown up for grabs. And luckily for, Tom, or for Laney, their player was in front of the Thompson player because that could have been a pick. So Thompson's defense, which we've talked about their success over the last two seasons, uh, bends a little bit, but far from breaking. And the Bulldogs are going to get decent field position. Dag it in to kick it away for the Wildcats. Yeah. The drive started out looking pretty good for Laney, but you're right, Thompson's stiff in there and going to get the ball back. Line drive kick down at the 14-yard line, and that is where the Bulldogs will take over when we return. Now, you didn't miss much while we were gone. Thompson runs for a couple of yards on first down. And now Laney will call its first time out with 5.32 left to play in the first quarter. We mentioned these Thompson Bulldogs, the defending state champions, and boy, what a year it was back in 2022 when the Bulldogs won their first state championship since 2003, going 14-1. and one. And there's John Tavis Curry, who we talked about earlier, had such a big game in the state championship game at Georgia State, outscored their opponents by more than 400 points did the Bulldogs last year. And here, I thought it was cool. They went into the playoffs ranked number four in the state. They ticked off number three, number two, and number one on and, the route to the state championship. And again, John Tavis Curry in the playoffs, just the five playoff games, over 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. Uh, just remark something we'll never see again from. My favorite thing is he's just blowing by people and he doesn't even look like he's running yeah. at his top speed. He's just well, he's coasting sometimes. Just and, it, and if you're wondering a follow-up, he, 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 he signed to play at Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. He's not at the school. He is currently trying to get himself into another football program somewhere. Uh, message back and forth with him on social media this week. Um, that he needs to be in school and on a team. And I told him that. I said, you've got a lot of people to help you. Let's get this done because, you know, it, it, it really is. He's got the quickness to play professionally. Mm -hmm. Now, does he have the size and all the, you know, all the other things? It makes up – it takes a lot. But he's got the God-given, you know, quickness for sure. But how many players from our area as flag flies on second down? On the offense. Five yard penalty, replay second down. Dominic Eubanks with the call. How many players in our area have we seen go that junior college yeah. route? Just, just find an opening somewhere, and it can take you anywhere you want to go. Yeah, look at the Dallas Cowboys starting defensive lineman right mm -hmm. now from, from, uh, from Silver Bluff. All right, hey, folks, uh, if you're in search of the perfect gift, planning the ultimate party or gearing up for the big game, look no further because we've got you covered. It's welcome to Sweet Annie's, your one-stop boutique. From handmade earrings to sassy hand towels that add a touch of personality, they've got it all. College gear for the super fan and in your life, delectable cake pops and mouth-watering casseroles, Sweet Annie's is your destination for every occasion. Uh, there is more, though. Uh, homemade ice cream is your treat that you do not want to miss. Yes, homemade ice cream, and it is divine. Sweet Annie's isn't just about uh, stylish clothing and fabulous household accessories. They're here to make your life easier. Uh, they offer ready-made, mouth-watering meals that are fresh, never frozen. So say goodbye to the kitchen and hello to more time for yourself and your family. Come visit uh, the folks at Sweet Annie's in the heart of downtown Thompson. And don't forget to check them out on Facebook to stay updated on their latest arrivals, promotions, and mouth-watering specials. Sweet Annie's, because you deserve the best. And I rode right by there just a moment ago. It is literally a couple of blocks away from where we sit right now, John. You, you, you had me at homemade ice yeah, cream. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're making us hungry every week. Yeah, they really they really fooled me because I got the read, this, and I went, Sweet Annie's, and I'm thinking food. And then I saw earrings, and then I thought, Food and they got everything. My wife can shop while I eat. That's perfect. I mean, it's a win-win situation. Every time, we, every time we go shopping, I'm looking for the chair near the sitting room. This is guy. I don't even need that. It's perfect. Pre-made meals and homemade ice cream. Nice stop for the Wildcats, by the way. Plus, my wife will be saving me all that money. You know, that's what she does. 
when things are on sale, she tells me how much money she saved me when she spends it. <laughs> so we, we know how much trouble they had against Burt Cunning oh, yeah. punting the football. Oh, yeah. Sure did. That was one of the differences in the game for sure. This time they get it away. It's a short punt. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. And it is picked up by the Laney return man, but he gets really nowhere. Yeah, Jameer Roberts, first man there for the Bulldogs, wraps him up. So Laney will start from basically midfield. Good field position for the Cats with 5.04 left to play in the opening quarter. Well, right now, folks, at McDonald's, you can get any size of your favorite frozen drink, like a new Hawaiian frozen punch or any size McCafe iced coffee, and they're only $1.89. McDonald's, I'm loving it. I have a feeling the McDonald's in Washington, Georgia, will get a visit at around 5.30 in the morning from somebody in this booth. Go ahead and pick mine up while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have it, I'll have it waiting on you when you get to Athens. Yeah, you guys have a big one tomorrow. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about that as we go along here. 28 and a half point spread is, 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 I don't know. Here's Harris, and Harris, a wall of black jerseys there to meet him, and he's yeah. driven back. It's going to be a loss of about eight. Any defensive coach would love to see that. Gang tackling, a host of black jerseys. One of the first in there was big number 76, and that is Dan Cummings, Dan Quavius Cummings. He is an outstanding talent for this Thompson defense. So they're going to give him forward progress to the loss of four. It seems like Cummings has been playing here for like eight years, and he's still a junior. <laughs> I think he started on the varsity when he was like in fifth grade. He did start as a freshman, and that's why it seems like he's been here forever. But really talented kid up front. It's the 75th season of Laney football. Picked up the 400th win in school history last November. Looks like we've got a timeout on the field. Timeout white. So that's the second timeout already for Laney. And we're only a little more than halfway through the opening quarter. Yeah, I'm not sure what what was going on there. I, you know, they, they looked really good on the first drive. It, you know, it stalled around midfield, but that first play, obviously, they lose some yardage, but I'm not sure what was going on. Maybe there was some confusion with the play. While they talk about it, let's find out what's going on the next week on The Dish. Coming up this Friday on The Dish, Chef Ross from Champions Retreat is going to be blessing us with lots of goodies. Plus, we have Abel Cricket going to be performing some music. Don't miss it, Friday at 12.30. Oh, Chef Ross, one of my favorites. He treats us well at Champions Retreat Golf Club during the Augusta National Women's Amateur every March and April. So the Wildcats have talked about it. It'll be second and 13, ball on the Laney 47 yard line. And it looks like Harris back in at quarterback. Caught the snap with one hand. They'll let him throw again. That's a bullet, but too much of a bullet. Overthrown intended for Tornorium Brown. I'd say. You know, the first few throws. First few throws, iffy. That one, he kind of zipped it out there. It wasn't on the mark, but he's got a little bit of an arm on him. Uh, Booby Harris. A little bit more of that rust <laughs> that uh, we talked about early on. Well, getting used to the players and, you know, things like that. Well, for him, yeah, getting used to any player because he hasn't been playing, but. You know, and also, he's new to that position. I mean, he's been playing receiver for the most part in his career. He's going to help Laney, no question. I mean, last week, playing his first game, he had an interception. And you see tonight, he's been able to run the ball pretty well. Third, 13, got his man. And again, missed him at the 45-yard line. Again, looking for Brown. Well, we said Thompson, one of their jobs, stuff the run, make them, you know, throw the ball. They did that. They, they stopped them for a three-yard loss on first down, made them throw twice, and now they're punting. So Thompson will get the ball back. Again, this is the region opener for both of these teams, so this is when it really starts to count. If you are a casual follower of high school football, Region standings are what determine your playoff seeding. 
as the Bulldogs will take over at the 35. I think I, I just saw witchcraft. I think that yeah. ball went through the chest yeah. of a Thompson player. <laughs> how did they not block that punt? I have no I idea. How that I don't know how he missed it, but uh, Storm Hunt uh, catch it on the run. Watch the replay. I don't. How did he miss this? It looked like he had the punt blocked easily. Oh, it went right past it. Right between them. Yeah, right between them. And then Hunt caught it on the run, and Thompson's going to have pretty good field position to start this offensive series. And there goes Trey Trey Jeffrey, the talented junior tailback, along with Jacias Jones. Thompson winner last week, 38 nothing through the shutout at Grovetown. And so far, doing likewise against the Wildcats and starting from their 34-yard line. And it is Jeffrey. Uh, He'll pick up three. He made something out of nothing there. Look, he was going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage, and he was able to kind of slither his way and spin and pick up a couple of yards. Mentioned this, the 75th season of Laney football. This is the 105th season of Thompson football, the 83rd year they have played on this very spot at the Brickyard, the stadium. The bricks around it, at least, constructed by the original bricks from the original Thompson High School, which was here on Main Street, was struck by lightning in 1938 and burned to the ground. They used the bricks to build this place, and it has become one of the most iconic venues in Georgia high school sports. I was wondering when we were going to see Jordan Lane and he's into the game. But you're right, John. When you think high school football, this is sort of what you think about, right? A small town, everybody in the town sort of closes down. I knew I, went, I had to run by a business here in Thompson before the game. I knew I'd have no problem parking or anything because nobody was going to be there. <laughs> They're all here. Uh, but it is. It's such a great atmosphere. and They've had such great tradition with coaches and players and so many kids that have moved on to college ball and even professional and even the Hall of Fame. And, Here's another nice run. This time it was Jameer Roberts. Yeah, and if, were it not for a shoestring tackle, he could have been gone there. Yeah, this is a great time to go out to Eaton Thompson if you, yeah. can, if you can find somewhere open. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you've ever come to one of those playoff games, this place uh, gets rocking. It is, it is wild, and it's packed. And yeah, and it, there have been some. Think about the moments that have been played on this game in this field with all the great Thompson teams over the years, back with Ray Guy and. And boy, those mid-80 teams with, with Jerry uh, Jerry Mays and Terry Pettis, they won back-to-back -back titles in 84 and 85. They had some uh, Jesse Hatcher, some spectacular players. Yeah, I, you would have to make the argument that Ray Guy would be the most accomplished no, high school football no. player to come out of the CSRA. I, I probably, and, you know, obviously out of Thompson. But I tell you what, if you're making a list of top ten in the CSRA, there's another Thompson guy. Ed, people forget Eddie how good Lee Eddie Ivory. Lee Ivory was. He was an incredible running back. He was a first-round draft pick by the Packers. An incredible, incredible player at Georgia Tech. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> As Jones keeps, and he will flag down. Where's our spot? Yeah, when, when you have a, a ward named after you that is given to the best player at that position in college football every year, I think that puts you pretty high on the list. And Ray Guy does, top punter, of course, in college football each year. Hold him. On the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay the down. And when you transform a position yeah. the way he did and become the first player at your position inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, and I, I gotta give credit too to Al Davis because punters just weren't drafted very much at all. And if they were, it was very late in the draft. To draft him in the first round, to know what a weapon he would be, I, that was that's pretty impressive. Because back then it just didn't, it still doesn't happen. I mean, think when's the last time a punter was really draft, was it drafted at all? Yeah, I don't know if Mel Kuyper would have liked that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will say this. I think Ray Guy would have done pretty well at the combine for a punter. He was an athlete. You course, bet. Great baseball player, great, uh, great, and, and of course those Thompson teams in the 60s that he was a part of. Tremendous, tremendous, uh, you know, several seasons. Thompson found itself second and 18 after the flag, and Jones picks up. Uh, about seven of it back. Uh, around the CSRA, we were kind of getting news of a big, big possible upset. Uh, Aiken on top of Barnwell, 12 to nothing. Uh, but Barnwell does get on the board with a field goal, so it's 12 to three. Jones on the move and gets rid of it. And got rid of the football, saved 
the sack. But it is fourth in about, what, 11 and a half or so. So a good stand by this Laney defense because Thompson had pretty good field position to start that drive at its own 33-yard line. Well, especially when you consider the last two series for Thompson, the way Thompson just, you know, just waltzed right through mm -hmm. them uh, on that first drive, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be a long night. But Laney's defense has stiffened a little bit. The offense moved the ball early. And now they, they got to get something going on offense again. Credit Ronnie Baker and his staff for Laney for making the adjustments. They stifled the Bulldogs the last two times they have had the football. And now the Cats will take over at the 24-yard line. I was going to say, for a minute there, nobody touched the ball. If I was Carl Holmes, I'd kind of go over there and maybe pick it up and take off running. But finally, one of the Thompson players does down the football. And I tell you, I, you know, we talk about the teams from the 60s and the teams from 84 and 85. The 2002 state champions from Thompson, 15-0. and 0, the, the best teams I've seen, I would rank them number two behind Josie. But it's the 95 Josie team. Because um, I didn't cover the Washington County teams of the 90s with Takeo Spikes. But I would say it was the 95 Josie and then right behind them was that 02 Thompson team. DeMarco McNair was an incredible running back. They had Deion Palmer uh, at quarterback who played at Louisville and Georgia Southern. They had the, uh, the, uh, the Brinkley, Brinkley brother, Brothers, Brinkley yeah. brothers, and Danny Verdun Wheeler who played at Georgia. That, those teams were loaded. Harris with a big run on first down. And he'll pick up nine. And, and the good thing, the thing about those teams, I remember sitting at Josie one night back when they had Marvin Stone, and I was talking to Ralph Starling, who used to do the radio call for Thompson. And, they were playing Josie, and that was back when Josie was very good. It was a good game. But Thompson, you know, was looking good, and all their players were sophomores. I had like eight sophomores on offense and like nine on defense. And I, you know, just made the comment, man, nobody's going to beat this team in two years. And sure enough, I mean, all of them luckily stayed together. Some of them got bigger and faster, and they went 15-0 and 0 to a state championship. And won that title on this very field. And then 20 years later, won another one last year, and their defending state champs will take a 7 to nothing lead into the second quarter. Well, they threw us a bit of a curveball and decided to run uh, one more play at the end of the second quarter. So it's going to be third and one for the Wildcats from their own 34 when we resume play at the beginning of the second quarter. And before we do that, let's get you your QBs by the quarter, sponsored, as always, by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, Harris for Laney was 0 of 4 passing, uh, did have five runs for 23 yards, and then Jones for Thompson was 1 of 4 uh, passing for nine yards and added another nine yards on the ground. Also, also folks, remember to uh, cast your votes for the 44 Strong Player of the Week in this week's poll on WJBF.com. The nominees for the 44 Strong Player of the Week this week are Trayvon Dunbar of Midland Valley, Jeremy Richardson of Burke County, Michael Doe of North Augusta, Terrence Smith of South Bacon, Cam Austin of Barnwell, and Telly Johnson of Hepsford. The poll will reign open until 11 p.m. tonight, and the winner will be revealed on Football Friday night, which begins at 1135. Tune in because you won't want to miss and find out who the 44 Strong Player of the Week is this week. Yeah, so you got about, uh, what, three hours left? Yep. You get your vote in. That's tough, man, because all those guys were phenomenal this past week. And but we had a front row seat for Trayvon Dunbar. It's, yeah, and it was hard for me because Dunbar's already won my, you know, on the radio side player of the week, and North Augusta had such a big win, and you had both Michael Doe and Corey Tillman from there. So, yeah, it was, it was tough to, to pick one this week. There wasn't a whole lot in that first quarter after the long opening drive for Thompson. They went yeah. 68 yards on that opening drive, and then the two teams after that went combined uh, for 54 yards the whole rest of the quarter. Wow. And we were talking during the break how Laney struggled with so many penalties against Hapsibah when we had them in, on week two, and have cleaned that up so far tonight. I don't want to jinx the Wildcats, but, I mean, they had 18 penalties for more than 100 yards. 18. And, you know. We saw them the last I, time. I, I told that, I said that, Nathan. I, I knew they had a lot. I said it early in the game. I didn't, I had no idea it was 18. That's a lot of penalties. Harris opens the second quarter with a first down run of four yards. Yeah, real similar athlete to Holmes, really. Short in stature, but can run, athletic, strong. Yeah. 
And, you know, we talk about all the greats in the Thompson history. You know, Laney's, Laney's had some players of their own over the years that have come through. J.K. Sab stands out, was a state player of the year in some publications back in the day. Boy, he was he was hard to stop. He was, And Robert Dunn, one of the best punt returners in the history of the SEC and certainly was one of the best we've ever seen here in high school football in this area. Went on to play at Auburn. Yep. This is going nowhere, and it's not going to matter. James Why it came in. Yeah, James. There was yep. The, yep. The guy in motion went upfield before they before snapped the ball. Snapped. And James Pride ran into the quarterback anyway on that play. But, of course, i got to go way back because the one I'm talking about mostly is Emerson Boozer, mm-hmm. great running back who played in Super Bowl three with the Jets. Had a really good uh, NFL career. He wasn't the one that guaranteed the victory. Well. But he was a, somewhere around. He there. was a lesser-known guy that said, hey, I think we can win. <laughs> <laughs> Number 32. I just thought it was so cool when I was a kid collecting, you know, sports cards. The first time I got one of his cards and looked on the back and saw that he was from Augusta, Georgia, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, so cool. Somebody from – same thing with Leroy Irvin from Glen Hills when he played it uh, with the Rams. And Laney is going to have to call its last time out of the half with 10.55 left in the second quarter. And speaking of people from your hometown, Laney head coach Ronnie Baker, three-sport star at Kendrick High School in Columbus, Georgia, football, basketball, and track. Columbus, Georgia, also the hometown of – Larry Mons. Well, also. well and, and he Frank, lives there Frank now, Thomas. not hometown. <laughs> and Frank, Frank Thomas. Thomas. Frank Thomas. <laughs> and much more importantly, yours truly. Really? Yeah, lived in Columbus until I was 13 years old. 13. Okay, I was going to say which high school. Yeah, I would have gone, well, gone to Shaw High School. Shaw, I, knew, I know Shaw because guess what? I lived in Columbus. Would, yeah, I played would you, at Columbus State. I forgot, yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, he said he's going to hit us with an impossible trivia question. I was wondering if that was. Oh man, that would have been a good one. <laughs> I texted, I texted AB and Nathan earlier today, and I said if if AB gets tonight's trivia, uh, Brandsmart USA trivia question, we probably are just going to retire the trivia question and have to find uh, some, something. Else. Well, when you said you were from Columbus, I was thinking, wait, you were from Atlanta. I knew you were from the Atlanta area, but I, okay, you moving your thirteen. When I was yeah, a teenager. Yep. Columbus, real similar to Augusta. By Very way. similar. Kind Very of similar cities. town. Yep. Hey, here's another flag after we talked about how many uh, penalties we didn't have. Goodness gracious. Number. Yeah, as Nathan pointed out, after that first drive, both teams have really – the offenses have stalled. The defenses are doing the job. And in Laney's case, they're starting to rack up some penalties now. Uh, that, uh, it's got to be four or five already. I apologize for even mentioning that. <laughs> On the offense, yeah. five yard penalty, we played it down. This is completely my fault. <laughs> Ronnie Baker's blaming you, too. <laughs> <laughs> During the replay, he's going to say, that John, that John Hart did it. Oh, boy, that is going to be <laughs> it's gonna be second and 25. Oh. How many coaches have something in the back of the playbook for that? I'm guessing just try to get – bite it off in little chunks. Yeah. What do they say? How do you, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Harris. Nope. Yeah, the passing game has not looked good – really not looked great for either team, although Thompson got a pass interference call and then a completion. But for Laney, they've really struggled with it. Well, you got to be careful here if you're the Wildcats, though, because you're in a dangerous place on the field. If, if you don't convert this, I mean, let's be honest, it's third and 24, Thompson can, Thompson can really flip the field on you in a hurry. Here. Well, that time Harris didn't really have a lot of time to throw, but even when he has, he's been off the mark. Yeah, he hasn't really had anybody running free. Jones for Thompson's had a couple of guys open. He's just mm-hmm. missed them. And this is something we really didn't see yeah. against that. So five, five wide, wide yeah. I wonder if this is going to be a draw. Well, no. Tunnel screen. Little tunnel screen, yeah. And they had it set up actually decent. Uh, and, you know, they just couldn't get the ball to Daggett. Or, or actually, I think they were going to – was that Holmes? Or was that – that yes. might have been yes. – it was. Fulani still without a completion, correct? That would be correct, John. Wow. And again, as you said, A.B., it's not like Thompson's lighting it up through the air either. Yeah, nine yards. Yeah, nine yards on one completion. They did get the 15-yard penalty on the pass interference on the first play of the game. But 
So the Bulldogs are going to have uh, got oh, it. Oh, well, they're really going to have great field position. Yeah. The punt is blocked. It is returned. It is Trey, Trey Jeffrey into the end zone for Thompson. Let's see the replay here. You see they, was it Jeffrey that got it? It was hard for hard to tell. That might have been number 20 and not 26 that, that picked it up and ran it in the end zone. We'll take another look at it. If it is number 20, it was Kasai. then that's Kasai Jones. One of the two of them got it. And either way, it's six for the Bulldogs. And there's Jones right there holding. I, I, I think it was him. I, it, it, like you said, six and the zero, especially with Jeffrey's jersey, it's kind of pulled, pulled up. He's got pulled up, yeah. Amerson is true with the point after, and you see the LED college-style lights. That's part of the, the the atmosphere here at Thompson. I mean, it is like a, a small college. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the lights didn't go out, folks. This, the, no, there we go. Great <laughs> job by the folks in the truck to give you an idea of what it looks like. And our camper crew up here on top of the press box at Luther Welsh Field. Yeah, they scored too quick the first time. That it was still light outside. We couldn't see the show. <laughs> now. now, speaking of Luther Welsh Field, we can't come here without thinking of the late great former head coach of the Thompson Bulldogs. He was here for 19 seasons, two different tours, 183 wins in his career, 11 region titles, three state championships, and hard to believe, A.B., that it's been uh, 12, more than 12 years now since we that lost is. on July 14, 2011. So respected. And that's one reason guys like John Barnett and some of the great assistant coaches that were here, Thompson was able to keep them because they respected Luther Welsh so much. And I think the stat, if I remember correctly, in 47 years of coaching, I, I can't remember if it was either he missed zero practices or maybe one. I, I think it was zero in 47 years. I mean, something's got to come up at some point, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. He, uh, a big return for Laney. How about this answer? Whoa! Again. How about that return from Holmes? Wow. And that was Kasai Jones who made the hit. And watch the flip, the uh, front tuck here from, <laughs> from C.J. Holmes. Watch. Whoop. Wow. wow. <laughs> and maybe that's the spark that the Wildcats need. I don't know that Holmes' back is going to be thinking that tonight. But, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I ice, ice bath will take care of it. I get out of bed for a month after that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they'd have to play the game somewhere else because I'd be laying there still. I wouldn't be able to get up. So the Cats start from the 45, and it's Harris across midfield into Thompson territory. Yeah, Harris showing a little different gear there when he saw the hole. Trying to get to the outside. To put a uh, sort of a, a bow on the Luther Welsh story, uh, it's amazing to me that he, he passed away not just a few months after he coached his final game here at Thompson. He was coaching hard until the very end and still not missing practice. How about Harris bouncing off? And it's a foot race to the end zone. Harris inside the Murphy Auto Group red zone to the 10 yard line. Yeah, I think a couple of different Thompson guys were chasing him down. But yeah, Harris broke to the outside. I just said a moment ago, he showed a different gear on the last play and he does it again there showing you he has got some speed. 38 yards. 38 yards, yeah. First and goal from the 10 for the Cats. And now Thompson. Wait a second. Let's talk about this. And Michael Youngblood will take his first time out of the first half. Yeah, Youngblood not happy with not just that play, but the play before as well as they were letting Harris kind of same play, just one to the left and one to the right. And the one to the right, he picked up big yardage. Well, we talked about Harris and how it might take him a second to sort of get in the groove, but this drive, he looks like a different player. Yeah, different. Like I said, just looks a little step quicker. And uh, Laney, Laney needed to an answer, though. You're down 14 nothing. This is a very good Thompson team. You've struggled a little bit moving the football. You don't want to fall behind three scores before half, you know. So getting, getting some points here are big. They've got to, you know, you can't, against a good football team, especially on the road, you can't give up opportunities like this and come away with no points. 
while they talk it over, let's listen in to what's coming up on Local Living. Hey guys, I'm Anna Christina, host of Local Living. Be sure to catch us every Saturday at 9.30 to find out what's happening in the CSRA. Local Living, Saturday morning at 9.30 on News Channel 6. Well, sorry, Anna Christina, I will be on the way to Athens, but AB will be up and on his oh, couch for at sure. 9.30. for sure, for <laughs> sure. The Wildcats first and goal from the 10. Yeah, C.J. Holmes in there now at quarterback. He's alternating between Holmes, Daggett, and Harris. And it's Holmes on the keeper. He's got a hole. Holmes in for six. Touchdown, Laney. Well, And the he, Cats are back in it. He had a lane and a big blocker. Watch the replay. Watch him follow his blocker, right? Just had a huge lane. It was big number 51. He didn't even have to block anybody. 51. Joseph Brazil. <laughs> and that the block uh, that springs Holmes. That was well executed by Ronnie Baker's squad there. And they're going to go for two. And they've got Harris back in. Keep an eye on Holmes. One on one at the top of your to the left of your screen there. They've been running it so well. I don't know why they would throw, but. When you got Holmes one on one, it's something to think about. Harris will throw, being chased, and down it goes. Jameer Roberts. So Roberts stifles the two point conversion attempt, but Atlaney back on the board. 14 6. Thompson leads 9 35 in the half. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Laney making quick work on that last drive, going 55 yards, taking just a minute and change off the clock. So here come the Bulldogs trying to answer. And Nathan making a great point during the break that Laney now has more offensive yards than Thompson does. And if you'd have told me that after that opening drive from Thompson, we'd have sold you some beachfront property or, around here. If you'd have told me that before the game started, yeah. I'd be a little surprised. But Give them credit. They are trying to fight their way back in this thing, and they did come away with points. I said that was important. They answered. Now their defense is going to have to stiffen. They've done a pretty good job since that opening drive. Remember, one of Thompson's touchdowns came on a block punt. The offense has only produced one score. Sean Tiernan there, the offensive coordinator. Found it. He was on the bottom right of your screen. And well-regarded assistant coach in the area. So first and 10, Thompson from its own 23-yard line. And uh, in and out of the hands, nice defensive play and broken up by Danny Daggett. Yeah, you're right, because it was a pretty pass, pretty, th you know, it looked like it was going to be a catch from Jordan Lane. and Really nice hit. Well, that's the thing, though, in this game so far. Jeffrey's got a few carries, but Jordan Lane's a big-time playmaker, and we haven't seen him really with the ball very much. And Jones, we haven't seen his running very much. What does he have, nine yards rushing? Yeah. Jeffrey's got 44 yards. He's only got four carries. Tried to set up the screen. Didn't work. Laney was... Equal to the task, helmet comes off. Oh, and Lane stayed on his feet, but unfortunately for him, he lost his helmet. Yeah. So. Well, Georgia Army National Guard offers you so much more than what you think. You can get a degree with money for school, learn job skills that translate to the civilian world, uh, make bonds that last a lifetime and earn pride for life. When you become a guard soldier, your family will thank you, your country will thank you, and your future will owe you. Loss of two on the previous play for Thompson, so they'll have it third and 12 from the 21-yard line. Four wideouts to the left for Thompson. Now Jeffrey goes in motion. And they'll throw, and they will complete. And it is across midfield for a big Thompson first down. 
And this time we can say with authority it is Kasai Jones. <laughs> Definitely Kasai Jones. Yeah, that was a well-thrown ball, but a great catch by Jones. A little bit behind him and a touch high, but heck of a catch there by Jones. 29 yards from Jones to Jones. And first down at midfield. And now Jeffrey with a pickup of seven. Anthony Jeffrey, only, only five carries so far tonight, but over 50 yards. Bulldogs work quickly. Jeffrey again. He'll have the first down inside the 40. So this Thompson offense starting to click. They didn't like Nathan's point during the break that Laney had more yards. Yeah. Jeffrey in the backfield with Jones. Jones will keep, and Jones will be across the 35. Give him five, second and five. So guys, Jones and Thompson's last game. They were off last week, but a couple of weeks ago, he had three touchdown passes. Now we got Jameer Roberts in at quarterback, and usually when he's in, it's going to be a run. And I would guess here it's probably going to be a run to the right, but let's see. He averages 12 yards a carry, and you see why here. As he picks up the first down, there is a flag down, so hold everything. Yeah, he was finally brought down. Nice tackle by number nine for Laney. That's Vincent Carter. Holding on the offense. Take your offense, you put it down. And by the way, keep an eye on number nine, Vincent Carter for Laney. He is a freshman out there starting on this defense. wonder who he's named after. <laughs> So the penalty will back the dogs up to the 44-yard line, where it'll be second and 15. I just heard one of the Thompson fans yell, you must be an alumnus of, of Lucy Laney <laughs> High School, but they've called a few on Laney tonight too yeah, now. It's been pretty even. <laughs> Jones, oh, couldn't get rid of it. And that's a huge sack way back at the 43-yard line. Jaden Shaw, who had a a lot of big defensive plays when we saw these Wildcats on game night live three weeks ago. He was outstanding in the heads of the game. You're right. And Jones mad at himself because he knows he needed to get rid of that football. And he just didn't want to take the chance to throw a pick. And instead, he eats it. But, man, they are third and a long way to go. Third and 27. Hey, quick, quick, quick. This is interesting. Laney's kind of hanging in here and getting a little more confidence as they go. And they've got some playmakers. And again, it's worth pointing out, this was a one-point game yeah. a year ago. And a game that was spread out over several weeks due to weather. And Michael Youngblood will burn his second timeout of the first half. Jordan Lane uh, is in the backfield now, but he's more of a pass catcher than Jeffrey is. Don't worry about those timeouts as much in the first half. Yeah. See the Thompson coaching staff. Well, we've talked about the history of the brickyard here. Did you know that this place was once home to a minor league baseball team? Now that I didn't know. Well, wow. here we go. Uh, yeah, the brickyard original there. There it is in its baseball configuration. The only existing picture I could find. And so that's the front gate right there. Yeah. And then you can see how the, the lights are arranged for baseball. So where very cool. Where we are in the press box and on the home side would basically have been sort of the. Uh, right center field, yeah, center field, center almost, field yeah. bleachers. It was this place was home to the Thompson Orioles, who played one year, 1956, in the Georgia State League, and drew over 40,000 fans that season to lead that league in attendance. Wow, <laughs> who knew? 
Good job, John Hart, digging that. Man, he could have nailed you on that trivia. Oh, man, he would have crushed me. (laughs) And I would have been so mad that I didn't know that. I'm still mad that I didn't. How did I not know that? I knew the old Jennings Stadium in Augusta, but yep. and Ty wow. Cobb and his history in Augusta, I had no idea about that. So, hey, Ken Nugent, one call, that's all moment for Michael Youngblood. What in the heck do you do on third and 28 here? Well, you know, I, you try to get the ball in the playmaker's hands and see if they can do something, I guess. But. And instead, is it a pick? Yep. Hey, the freshman. They're going to say he came down with it, and that is Vincent Carter who's had a big game on defense for the Wildcats so far and a big pick here to give the Cats the ball for 39. Yeah, the freshman jumping up and making a play. Well, he should be able to jump. I mean, Vince <laughs> With the name, yeah. Yeah, the coach is pumping him up. They are happy for that young man. And I tell you, it takes – you've got to be a tough customer as a ninth grader to be, first off, just to, be in, to play football, then to play on the varsity, and then to start – and to come in here and make an impact. You know, there are very few ninth graders around Georgia high school football tonight making an impact on a varsity game. So kudos to that young man. And you said it, A.B., these, these, these Laney Wildcats just kind of hanging around, getting some confidence, some trouble on the snap. Could have been worse. Yeah, well, Thompson says they have the ball. The officials disagree. Yeah, that was number 56 for the Bulldogs. That is Jordan Jones. Harris made something out of nothing, picked up one. Tell you around again around the CSRA too, and we got scores coming up at halftime. But North Augusta hanging in there with the defending state champions from Dutchport. Close game, 13 to 9 right now, late first half. Another short game for the Cats. We talked about the atmosphere here at the Brickyard. One thing Ronnie Baker told us this week is they practiced over at Laney. You know, their marching band, the Pride of Augusta, not the quietest marching band. Yeah. And so they practiced with the band to get used to that noise and get used to hand signals and communication and for this brickyard atmosphere. I like that idea for sure. Yeah, because I, I remember after the game, remember Kira was talking about how loud the yeah. band was the yeah. whole game. Harris, QB, he's got one of his weapons, C.J. Holmes, up top of the screen. Third and eight gets rid of it. It is complete. And I believe it's going to be a first, and it will. Second effort got him the first down. It's going to be a first down, I believe, anyway, but he's across midfield to the 48 of Thompson. Tyreekus Jones made the tackle on Holmes. He made a nice catch. Clock ticks now down toward the four-minute mark. Don't forget the Eichel's Law Firm halftime show coming up with Kira. She'll have some special guests for you. We'll go all over the scores, have the first half highlights. And we'll shine a spotlight on our host school, Thompson High School. A different back that time. That was Angus Myrick carrying the ball for Laney. Pick up a five. I think I had a chance to get my favorite here, the touchdown going into the half. And then the ball to start the second. Yeah. Well, kind of a two for one for the Cats. This could be, again, this is this is going to get interesting. If they're able to go down and punch this in, they're going to eat up a lot of the clock. You're right. And then they get the ball. This is getting uh, Thompson. They need to play around here. This would raise some eyebrows around the state. Oh, yeah. You think for sure. Especially with, you know, Laney just at one, one, and one, even though they played, you know, their, their one victory was a hard fought against a pretty good team in Hepsiba. We know first Prez is a decent team. Harris a yard shy, going to be with third and one. Well, you can't have a miscue or anything here. You don't want to put yourself in a bad spot on fourth down, and they get the first down easily. Yep, and then some still fighting. Ball comes out and goes out of bounds. Cats will keep it. That'll be spotted at the 35-yard line. That was Angus Myrick, yeah. who first time we've called his name tonight. Yeah, they put him in there on this series. A couple of runs. And Ronnie Baker content to just let that clock run. A 
Myrick and Harris look to the sidelines. Play clock is down to nine. And the Cats will snap it with four. Harris looking for blocking. He's got it. And a pickup of five. And once again, it was Chance Bush leading the way, helping Harris pick his way through traffic. Harris on second and six, flags in. And yeah, that's likely to come back. Yeah, going to be a hold. Oh. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty, we play the down. I think it was James Pride, number four, trying to spring his quarterback for a game. Now we got some pushing and shoving going on. So the hold will make it second and 11. Check that, second and 16. Now second and 16, minute 40, still plenty of time, but they eat up all of their timeouts, Nathan? Thompson has one, Laney none. Laney has none, yeah. CJ Holmes trying to get some of the yardage back. Yeah, stop made by Cervantes Feltz. Yeah, Feltz made, remember, a big, big hit in the thompson Burke County game. I think he had a hit of the game. Yeah, I believe you are correct. Third and seven. It's a big third down for both sides. Yeah. Sure is clock under a minute now. You think it's two down territory for Thompson. They're not going to need it. As Holmes will have the first down and inside the red zone at the 16-yard line. Well, it'll stop the clock until they can get the chains moved, and Andy probably should have gotten out of bounds there. I know they stop it momentarily, but if you don't get the play in quickly, you still lose some time here. Pickup of 17. Yeah, and the clock is running, man. Yeah, so, that was a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to lose. They're going to lose about 15 seconds uh, there. He could have gotten out of bounds. And now they run it with James Pride up the middle and with no timeouts left. We really don't have much of a kicking no. game either. And now we do have a uh, player down for Laney. Well, that might have been a good play design, get the player <laughs> down and, <laughs> and get them to stop that clock. Caleb Middleton is. Clock's still running. Yeah, the clock is running. The clock is running. Laney is not happy about it. It stops with 17.8 seconds as uh, the Laney training staff comes out to check on Middleton and some of the Thompson training staff. Well, they ran it all the way down to 17, and they definitely need to put some time back on the clock, just a matter of how much. And you know what the Thompson fans are thinking about this. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying you know what the Thompson fans are thinking. And they do put uh, 11 seconds back on the clock, 24 seconds. Well, you know what? The Thompson fans, I know what they were thinking too. But this kid was banged up on an earlier play in this series as well. He got up limping. Well, you can see how he's yeah. walking yeah, he, now. He got up early, earlier very gingerly and was kind of limping around. And as a matter of fact, Nathan pointed at the screen on a, on a, a few plays ago. When he was slow to get up, now he's banged up again. Now he's in there trying to battle with guys like Dan Cummings and Dan Quavius Cummings. I, mm -hmm. I can I can understand that's a tough job. So Middleton helped off the field, and the Wildcats will have it second and six from the Thompson 12. 24 seconds left in the half. Yeah, that's the big thing. With no timeouts, they've got to try and negotiate this 24 seconds. And the clock's running, and they're losing time. Like right now, yeah. there's six, seven seconds off the clock. It's eight seconds without running a play. Yeah, you're, you're down to basically one play now. Yeah, I don't get that down so close. Yeah, they're, they're, they're snapping it with eight seconds left. This is it for the half. And Harris going to throw it incomplete. Okay, well, there'll be 3.3 seconds left. So they'll get one more play, but you could have had – you could have had at least one more. Well, three things happened on this play series, John. First, you had C.J. Holmes not run out of bounds. 
they lost a good 15 seconds, right? Then they run a play up the middle with James Pride, the fullback, something they really haven't done most of the night. And then you lose a ton of time. Then they're not ready when the injury timeout is over. They weren't ready when the first down walkers were moved. And then they let the clock run there, you know, ready to, you know, run a play. I, man, they have – they could have probably had seven plays, and instead they're going to get two. And now Harris is going to have to heave it to the end zone with 3.3 seconds left. So here we go. He'll step up. Down he goes. Wow. Yeah. Brought down from behind. You mentioned him earlier. That is – Amari McAllister, the senior linebacker. Well, that was a little bit of mismanagement there. And, you know, so I, you know, I don't want to harp on the coaches because you can't be out on the field doing it. Um, the players got to be more aware in that spot. And, unfortunately for Laney, they were not. Kara Goldstein is down on the sidelines with Michael Youngblood, Thompson's head coach. Kara. Coach, I know we talked about effort. Uh, what are you pleased with so far in terms of effort from your guys? Well, I think we're playing hard on both sides of the ball. We had a mental lapse right there defensively um, where we lined up wrong and they end up making us pay and end up scoring a touchdown. What we got to do is a better job of making our adjustments on the run. The next thing offensively, I thought we shot ourselves in the foot a couple of plays. We had a wide open pass down the middle that we kind of overthrew a little bit. And then we missed a couple of blocking assignments and we got sacked one time on a big play. So we got to do a better job offensively of holding up on the offensive line. But overall, I'm pleased. We just got to turn this heat up a little bit in the second half. Offensively, you said that you wanted extended drives. What adjustments do you have to make to control the offense more thoroughly in the second half? Well, they're athletic and we got to maintain blocks. That's the biggest thing. We got to maintain our blocks. We got to keep doing all the things that we're doing offensively. We just got to execute just a tad bit better and I think we'll be fine. Thanks so much for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. All right, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up at halftime. We'll be right back. A big part of the Thompson tradition is the band, and we will now take a listen as they begin their halftime performance. You want me to? As the band is finishing setting up, it's time to tip our hats to two amazing Thompson, Georgia legends, Two State and the fabulous Sweet Annie, as these two powerhouses have teamed up to bring you the heart-pounding action of this week's Your Hometown Game of the Week. When the game clock isn't ticking, make sure you check out Sweet Annie's for all your boutique desires. And when it's time to get down to business, call Two State. They've got you covered for all your commercial, industrial, roofing, and metal needs. And now let's take a listen back at that incredible Thompson band.
another important part of Thompson's legacy is their agricultural program. Let's now take a deeper look inside how that works. We have to do a lot of teaching and a lot of education so that students can take what they learn in the classroom and then therefore go forward and be able to grow their own food and their own crops, vegetables, and animals to sustain um, not only themselves, but our entire country and our entire world. This program ain't just about trees. It ain't just about animals. It ain't just about plants. It's about what it can help you go through throughout life. It helps you with money. It helps you understand people. It helps you see other people. And I hope students get a greater appreciation of agriculture. They understand how their food is grown or raised and produced, where it comes from. Uh, you know, you can easily walk into a restaurant, order a meal, uh, pay for it, and then leave with your tummy full. But to get a greater appreciation of how that food got to your plate um, is really important. I think I'm going to carry the experience, like learning learning about new things and meeting new people. Students here at Thompson High School um, are very privileged to have lots of uh, supplies and equipment to use and to learn how to operate. Uh, they learn stuff every day. With our nursery landscape class, we're able to have uh, two greenhouses that we produce plants in for a big, uh, for a big uh, spring plant sale. And so uh, students get hands-on experience through plant science opportunities and experiences. We also have something new at uh, Thompson High School that we um, have implemented in the last year, and that is tower gardens. Tower gardens are uh, hydroponic uh, towers where we grow plants vertically uh, using water and nutrients and uh, artificial light. And so students are able to see how plants grow using those resources indoors and how much quicker the plants can grow when you feed them nutrients and light on a constant basis. Part of the agriculture program uh, in the state of Georgia um, FFA is a national organization that is an integral part of agriculture education and so FFA is huge uh, in our state and our nation but in Georgia we pride ourselves on having the best FFA programs in the nation and Thompson High School is no different. My favorite thing that became about the Ag um, program is FFA. I love FFA. It offers what you can do after school, not just what it's about, how you can get money, how you can think about your future, animals. I'm a, I love animals. We have um, great leaders in our program, student leaders, and these students uh, not only compete in competitions against other um, schools from around the state, but also around uh, the United States. And we have been very successful in these competitions, the different activities that we do, but it's all about the students. It's a student-run organization. I'm just here to oversee and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, but as far as the development of our program and what we do with FFA, it's all about the students, and, and they really um, take ownership in that. My favorite part of the agriculture program is the competitions. Being competitive is my thing. I do welding because I like competing with the boys. Um, my favorite thing is to watch students come in with little or no agricultural experience or background and just watch them, um, the fun and the joy in their uh, face when they learn new things like how to drive a tractor or a lawnmower or um, how to catch certain animals that are nuisance animals. Um, just, just seeing students learn and having more opportunities um, come their way and seeing what they develop as they go through their high school years and then possibly even pursue a career outside of uh, high school. I'm here with the admissions recruiter from Payne College. And Ms. Proctor, I know that Payne College has so much history and is so important to Augusta. Can you tell me a little bit about that unique history? Absolutely. Our institution has been around since 1882. Um, we initially started as Payne Institute, and then we grew as the institution and became Payne College. Um, and since then, we've been in the community um, very exciting times for those, you know, pursuing higher education degrees at the time and then those who matriculated on to become very successful teachers, preachers, lawyers, and etc. And what enrichment programs are in place right now for students who are looking to get enrolled at Payne College? Oh, there are many opportunities and advancement um, things that we're doing for students who are interested in Payne College. Two of them actually is we're currently waiving application fees and we're actually offering scholarships on the site for students um, who have a GPA of a 2.0 or a 3.0, and those numbers start between $8,000 to $20,000. Wow, well thank you so much for all you do. We really appreciate it, Ms. Proctor. We will be right back.
Welcome back to Game Night Live at the Brickyard. I'm on the sideline with my friend Sheikah from McDonald's. And can you tell me a little bit about how you got started at McDonald's? Yes, I've been at McDonald's now for 18 years. Um, I love what I do, and um, we, we 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 are big on the community, hiring hiring all kinds of kids as well. Um, as long as you're 16 years or older, you'll be able to work at McDonald's. Uh, we enjoy working with them. We, we we work around their schedule. We're working with sports, any activity they do. We all work around their schedules as well. You said that you're big on the community. Can you talk a little bit about why it's so important that kids understand that McDonald's is really there for them and wants to partner with them? It's very important. We also have a scholarship as well. If you work for McDonald's for six months, you can apply for the scholarship. And sometimes it's up to $3,000. So we're real big on our community and so I like to go out and be good with them as well. So I enjoy working with McDonald's and with the community as well. Thank you so much, Chico. We really appreciate what you do for the community. Right now, I am going to grab my friend, Sergeant Lyons. He's going to come over and talk to us a little bit about the Georgia National Guard. Sergeant Lyons, can you tell me how you started your career with the National Guard? Roger, I started my career in the National Guard in the uh, late 2000s. The biggest thing was incentives for school. I wanted to further my education by way of not paying out of my pocket. So the National Guard was the way that I was able to obtain my bachelor's degree, working on my master's, and just overall better myself. And partial main reasons why I'm here is I like to spread that to the, the students in McDuffie County so uh, things can be a little bit better for them. They're not financially strained like a lot of students are. The Georgia National Guard is a great option for a lot of students. What incentives are there right now for someone who's interested? Well, the biggest incentive is, is we have 100% tuition assistance for all state schools, uh, as well as private schools, as well as they qualify for the Montgomery Jewel complete at the completion of AIT. So just for a great start, um, a good boost to get them going while they're in undergrad would be uh, just to get that 100% tuition assistance. Thank you so much for all you do for the community and your service. We appreciate it, Sergeant Lyons. All right, guys, we'll be right back and we'll get started with the second half of Game Night Live here at the Brickyard. Michael's Law Firm Halftime Show rolls on as the Pride of Augusta Marching Band plays from Laney High School at midfield here at the Brickyard. Time to get you up to date on your scoreboard, out-of-town scoreboard from a lot of big matchups across the area. Tonight. Yeah, Evans traveling over uh, into Peach uh, Country, taking on Strom Thurmond. The Rebels lead it 18-7. Washington Wilkes, that's a good matchup there with Elbert County, 20-16. The Tigers lead it. Burke County out in front of Oconee County. That's a nice uh, start for Burke County, 28-7. Veterans lead to Lakeside, 17-7. Lincoln County, that's a, always a big matchup with Commerce, 10-7. They lead it. Harlem out in front of Aquinas, 28 to 16. Also, you've got North Augusta hanging in there with the defending state champs from Dutch Fork, 13 to nine, and Midland Valley up 20 to seven. One other quick note too, Aiken trying to get their first win of the year. They lead Barnwell 12 to 10 at halftime as well. And that's of course a matchup of uh, Dwayne Garrick. Coaches the, the, the coach, yeah, yeah. Dwayne Garrick, the former <laughs> coach at Barnwell, now at Aiken. So kind of an interesting matchup there as well. All right, uh, now let's take a look at our halftime stats. and. I, you know, to be, yeah, there's the big number right there, A.B., you're pointing at 146 rushing yards for this Laney offense against Thompson. If you would have told me that they would have that, like 60 more, almost 70 more yards rushing than Thompson, I would I would have said, Rebecca, we got to move out. We lost the house. <laughs> uh, man, and, and the coach made a good point. Stay with your blocks. They're not in Laney's athletic, and that's why they're getting able to get some stops on Thompson. Well, there are the numbers. Let's show you how we got to those numbers with our first half highlights. Well, here was Thompson's first score, Jameer Roberts. He is kind of their interior back, their pounder. And then here's the block, and it was Kasai Jones. Remember, they blocked the punt at number 20. Kasai Jones, uh, Nathan tells us he's a transfer from Ware County. He comes in and gets the uh, return for the touchdown. And then here was uh, – Laney on a return, C.J. Holmes, and here was the flip. <laughs> and that was Kasai Jones as well that uh, laid that hit. And this is when the Wildcat offense really got things into gear. Well, they, they had the ball for over 14 minutes of the first half. That is big. And you see there is uh, Robert, or excuse me, uh, Harris. Harris was chased down from behind. And here's C.J. Holmes as he gets into the end zone with a touchdown. We saw him do that twice against Hepsiville. Now this is Thompson trying to answer that Laney, Laney uh, touchdown. And that's, hey, Kasai Jones is all over our highlights. That was him making that catch. And then here's the interception from the freshman, Vince Carter. 
who made a nice play on the ball. So Thompson leads 14-6. Kira has the Laney head coach, Ronnie Baker, down there. Kira. Hey, Coach, 146 yards running in the first half. 80 of those came from Javaris Harris. Can you tell me what you're pleased with so far in the first half? Yeah, we put forth the effort up front, and I think the offensive line and the tight ends in the backs are blocking pretty good for them. We just got to continue to, uh, you know, be physical at the point of attack. Early in the second half, you, you took your last time out, and then Javaris Harris came out and looked totally different. What adjustments did you make that allowed him to have more control of that offense to finish out the first half? The biggest thing is that you just understanding of what we're trying to do as far as our technique and team and the concept, the run and play concept. And uh, we just had to make sure that we was on our assignments blocking wise and, you know, just made minor adjustments and it turned out pretty good for us in the second quarter. How do you feel your team is doing playing the next play and playing the situation? It has its ups and downs right now. We're making too many mental mistakes, got too many penalties, but, you know, all over, you know, with everything that's happening, being down 14 to 6, we still got a chance. We're still in the game. We just got to make sure we finish the game. Thank you so much for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Part of the Thompson student section here, brought to you by Payne College Lions. Our student section is out of this world. Put, put some time and effort into that time. Yeah, trust me, there's more of them. They're at the, it's halftime. They're at the yeah, concession they're the, stand. If you, and I can, we can see the concession <laughs> stand from here. And there, there are a lot of folks slow getting back to their seats right now. Well, go ahead and pull up a chair yourself because we've got two more quarters of football to go and Thompson kicking away to Laney to start this second half. The Cats down just eight and are going to have good field position. Flag coming in from over near the 40-yard line. That was Myrick on the return. I guess Myrick. And, you know, Lane, one, again, the, one of the key stats, it didn't harp on it maybe enough that I in the halftime was the time possession, having it for over 14 minutes compared to a little over nine minutes. And that that's a great game plan for Ronnie Baker. Keep Thompson off the field as much as you can. Yeah. And uh, one way to hold down the offense. We're doing that a lot. We're running the football, but then also kind of the block pump for a touchdown stolen offensive possession from yeah. Thompson as well. Yeah. Uh, Laney just 11 passing yards, one completion in the first half. But again, when you're running for 146, you don't have to worry about it. So after the penalty on the Wildcats, Laney back all the way up to its 32-yard line, or 29-yard line, I should say. Still not too bad field position in Jarvis Harris, who had a pretty nice first half run of the football with 80 yards, and here he goes. And I'll pick up three on first down, and that brings Actually. us to our QBs by the quarter, brought to you as always, always by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, for Laney, uh, Harris was one of eight for 11 yards, but he's run the football for 80 yards uh, in the first half. Uh, and then Jones uh, for Thompson was three of eight for 36 yards and didn't have that interception late in the second quarter. Actually, you're going to give him – he squirted four, and they're going to give him say, seven that was, yards. That was yeah. a quiet seven yards on that first down yeah. play. Well, it looked like he was down, and he kind of shot forward, and his knee didn't touch, so he got seven yards out of it. And this will be a first down across the 45. And, again, it, you, you're, he's following these two big guys up front. And, you know, I don't know what Thompson does with it because 55 and 56 for Laney, that's – uh, uh, Gatling Hall and uh, our Gatling Hall and Chance Bush, and that we got an injured player for Laney. But 55 and 56, we're getting it done. Is it Harris that's down? Yeah, that yes. is Harris that is down. That would be a tremendous loss for the Wildcats because he yeah. has picked up seven yards and nine yards on the first two plays of this half. But back to your point, AB. Yeah, well, uh, Chance Bush, who is one of the all area preseason offensive linemen, he and Gatling Hill, uh, uh, Hall. Basically, the quarterback's just getting behind those two big guys and following them. And, you know, if you're Thompson, you got to get through them to get to them, and it's, and it's working effectively. And, you know, Ronnie Baker said it's about knowing this game plan and what we're doing running the football. And for Harris, being a new player, even tougher for him, but he's obviously done a good job tonight approaching 100 yards rushing. But if he has to go out of the game, they have a similar player in Holmes to put right back in there. Daggett as well. Yeah, and Daggett too. So, yeah, you know, obviously Harris has been the star so far in the first half, and it looks like he's – Going to get up and walk off on his own. Still still kind of gingerly walking there. Oh, wait, yeah, he's, he's hurting a little bit. And again, he is the young man playing just the second game of the season, played uh, just a half last week, had an interception, transferred in from Greene County where he was 
an all-region wide receiver last year. As a matter of fact, finished among the top 20 receivers in the state of Georgia in uh, passing, uh, receiving yards, caught 55 passes. Well, you know, the last thing he wants to do is come out of this game. Yeah, those last few steps, I don't know if he's going to come back yeah. in this game. And let's see, they do. it looks like they are going to Holmes. And again, Holmes and Daggett will be the two guys now, it looks like. And Holmes gets the carry on first down from the 44-yard line. And to your point, A.B., look at him. Just push that pile behind yeah. his blockers and yeah. another Wildcat first down. It's the same play. It ain't broke. Don't fix it. You're, you're eating up clock. You're moving the ball. Thompson might be in some trouble tonight. Yeah, and you got, a you got a fresh Holmes. And not only are they in trouble tonight, if I'm an opposing team watching Thompson, I mean, look, look at, did you see the lineman out in front of him? him all he's doing is following those guys. He gets behind him and just follows him through. If I'm an opposing team and I'm watching this game uh, film, you know, I, uh, again, you're seeing a weakness for Thompson right now. Into Thompson territory go the Cats at the 44-yard line. Can they adjust? That's the key. And that's they the, do so on first yeah, down. This time they brought everybody up <laughs> and just, uh, you know, if, if you want to throw a pass, do it. There was no, there were no defensive backs beyond like five yards of the uh, line of scrimmage there. Well, you know, again, in the text conversation we had earlier today before the game, Nathan brought up, it's like, you know, what Laney does is not necessarily complicated. Yeah. But it's can you stop it? Yep. That is exactly right. You know, they know what's coming. But, again, when they, they've they got these two they, the two big linemen, they pull them either way and you, you follow them and, I mean, it's tough to get to the ball carrier. And there, there it is again. This is Daggett. And he'll pick up a couple flag down. The flag came in late. It was in the – and Thompson's pointing that it's against Lane. Close the foul. Face mask. On no, defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, definitely saw his head turn. Well, that's a gift for the Cats. They were going to be facing third and long. And the Thompson fans are not pleased right now. But you know what? It's not the refs that are keeping Laney in this football game. It's Lane, Thompson not been able to get that offense off the field. I don't think the fans realize Laney's approaching 200 yards rushing, almost triple what Thompson has. And Thompson fans are not used to games being quite this tight this time of the season here at the Brickyard. Well, this play is over before it starts. Ball start. the, the, what's so weird about offense. this game is how the first drive penalty. went. Replay your first down. So the first drive, Thompson goes 68 yards down the field and immediately scores. I mean, think about that. 68 yards, they only got, what, 40 or so after that. This is a weird, weird yeah, the game. 15 of it on that first drive was, of course, the pass interference. Yeah, probably. yeah. First and 15 from the 34, and some confusion on the offensive side of the ball. Well, heck of a play that time as Daggett push. tried to jump through. Jordan Jones caught Daggett almost in midair, made a great play on the ball. Watch this play here by Jones. As, as Daggett tries to jump, Jones catches him in midair. Nice play. We, we've talked about how important kickers are, though. How much is it? I yeah. mean, it hurts Laney that they, oh, they, no they couldn't kick that extra point. They couldn't kick that field goal before yeah. the half. This is a totally different game if they have a kicker. Yeah. Well, or if they manage the clock a little differently, too, at the end of the half. They'll try to throw it again. They only tried this a handful of times in the first half. They're going to start out one for one in the second half. Touchdown to Daggett, 36 yards. And Laney. <laughs> That's a two-point conversion away from tying this thing. Wow. Yeah, see who came back in there to throw that touchdown Yeah, pass. Harris, Harris came back in, and he hits Daggett on the touchdown, 36 yards. Kind of faked that QB power run. Yeah, you, they kept pounding. Hey, Ronnie Baker, that was an excellent drive. Uh, his coaching staff. Drew them in, drew them in. They pounded, pounded. And what did I say on that one play? There were no defensive backs back. Mm -hmm. And Laney saw it as well because they hit him with an easy pass play there. So now the two-point conversion tie. Harris has a hole. Harris is in. We are tied at 14, and flags fly. 
Well, this is going to turn some heads around the state if this update gets around. We'll keep it right here as we find out the penalty. After the touchdown, we have a sports light on the kicking team. will be tip 50 yard penalty. Well, you just tied it up, uh -huh. and now you're going to give Thompson really good field position. You see Harris limping still there. 14 all, 8.03 to play in the third. Well, quality over quantity. Laney was one of eight passing in the first half, now one of one for 36 yards and a score here in the second. And Harris making a claim possibly for player of the game if Laney's able to pull this out. Could be an early nominee as we would name our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game at the conclusion of this contest, and the Bulldogs will start from the 36-yard line. Yeah, Jordan Lane wrapped up that time by a host of Laney Wildcats on the return. We haven't really seen – Lane is a game-breaker with a lot of speed. We haven't seen much from him tonight. Jeffrey doesn't have a ton of carries tonight. It's very – and, again, as a whole, Thompson's offense, other than that first drive, a little bit flat. They did have the one nice throw and catch from Jacias Jones to Kasai Jones, but – 65 yards on the opening yeah. drive, only 104 total. See if they get Jeffrey back involved. He had six yeah. carries for 55 yards in the first half. Yeah, I mean, the guy's averaging nine yards a carry, just as he has all season. Seems like – seems to be getting the ball a little more. But they're worried about Laney's defenders stopping the run. Maybe that's why they want to – maybe they want to open it up a little bit. Jeffrey had 55 yards in the first half, but Jones will keep on first down and barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Jeffrey, 55. He's averaging just a shade under 100 yards a game, about 90, 85, somewhere in there. But, again, that's with not a lot of carries. And they're, it, it is – he's going to stay in there now. Kasai Jones looks like he's – I know he's going to stay in and just line up at receiver. Probably just trotting off. And it is Jeffrey. And again, Daggett is equal to the task. Tripped him up at the 41-yard line. That's a loss of one. And the longer you that think, look at how much confidence Laney is playing mm -hmm. with right now. They are not even worried about this. They, they, you know, they've got it. They're stopping the run. This is a really nice performance by the Wildcats so far. A if, lot of game left, but very impressive. If you were not with us at the beginning of the broadcast, Thompson is 18 and one all time in this series. Laney has not beaten Thompson since 1987. Well, and they're the defending state champions and they're number one in the state. <laughs> you know, a lot going against Laney, but Jones, here they are. deep and broken up, knocked away by that man again, Vincent Carter. The freshman. Who had the interception in the first half, big pass break up here, fourth down. I think Laney has always had athletes that can play the ball. Yeah, in that, the second well, half. I said that earlier. Yeah. If you're going to go yeah, to the pass, absolutely. if you're Thompson, Laney's strength on their defense is probably that secondary. Yeah. They're so athletic, especially yeah. when they throw the some of the offensive guys out there with Harris and company. But when you look at the box, they're 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 daring them to throw the yeah. ball. Cause they're stuffing eight in the box. Yeah. And so Laney opens this second half with a score, a two point conversion, and now a three and out. As the Bulldogs are forced to punt. Not a great punt. And the Cats are going to have great field position at the 37-yard line. Some double takes of people when they get this score on their phone. Yeah, well, we're about to find out what Thompson's made of in 2023. they got to forget 2022. Yeah, they're the state champions. But right now, they got a Laney team that is playing with a lot of confidence. And their game plan is working perfectly. They ran a, uh, an incredible series the last time, and they, you know, Thompson's going to have to come up with a play. Whether Jameer Roberts or Dan Quavius Cummings or Storm Hunt, Hunt had eight picks last year. Somebody's got to come up with a play. And watch Laney; they're just going to go back to the bread and butter, which is I'm going to follow these two pulling players, and that's exactly what's happened. It's 41, who is lineup is kind of a tight end H back. They bring him and one of the linemen and pull, and he just runs right behind those two guys. Now, this is what can hurt Laney 
And they've already got how many penalties now? Nine? Uh, nine for 75. This would be 10 for 80 if it goes against them. But I don't. With the officials. That's 10 penalties for 80 yards. Look, I, you know, Hepsville was their second game of the season. And you don't want to have 18 penalties in any game, but maybe you give them a little bit of a pass. But you got to start cleaning that stuff up. As Nathan said, especially with this kind of game plan, you're not running anything elaborate. It's a, a run offense. You've got to, you know, be disciplined not to get these penalties. And you see the respect they have for Holmes. They're, you at can't the just out of this. There. You just can't see the safety, but there's mm -hmm. two men right over the top of him. Laney called. Laney called the timeout. I was trying to figure out who called their first time out of the half, and it was the Wildcats, which brings us to our Brandsmart USA trivia question. Oh, and I God. texted AB oh, earlier, and I said, like I said, if you get this one, my friend, I will tip my cap to you. But uh, we talked earlier about Luther Welsh, right? He is the winningest coach in Thompson history, 183 wins in 19 seasons. Your Brandsmart USA trivia question. Who is the second winningest coach in Thompson history? Give you all a little bit to think about that. And we'll have your answer for you in the fourth quarter. Got any guesses off the top of your head while we wait? Guesses? Yeah. Oh, man, you're that <laughs> confident? <laughs> wow. wow. Man. No, no I, you know, I've, listen, I've, I've worked with you long enough to know never to be quite confident in the wow. trivia question because you will, you will pull answers out of places that I can't even imagine. I have a, I have a this, guess. Was this the same guess. time period as that baseball field? <laughs> no. Yeah, oh, I do think it's a ways back. I'm kind of, kind of pulling for you after you're poking the, poking the bear all afternoon. <laughs> it is a, it is a long way back for sure. Because well, you know, Welch had, Welch had two stints here. Mm -hmm. He was here in the '80s. So you got to go back before. It's definitely before '84. Uh, 80, you know, his stint then. It may be, it may be not. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> it, <laughs> Laney first down for Watch it be somebody with not 32. a very big total. I'll, I can even give you a hint on that. On the total? On the total. Okay. 100 wins. Oh, wow. Mm. It's way back then. Because <laughs> they had to have enough to pile up 100 wins before Luther. Because there's nobody that's done it since Luther. Wildcats second and 14 from their own 33-yard line. And it's Harris. That is a large man dragging him down. But took him a while to get him there. Why didn't I read that chapter well, yeah, we, in the Brickyard? <laughs> well, yeah, well, we, know, we know somebody who does know the oh, answer. Oh, there's no doubt. Question. There's no doubt John Barnett. He's a Thompson football encyclopedia. Dan Cummings on the stop for Thompson. It's funny, I ran into John Barnett on the way up to the booth before the game, and we had a conversation about this coach. Out of nowhere, he did not know it was there's, the trivia question. There's two Ooh. last names that I've got in my head um, that I'll, I'll just have to guess between those two. The one I thought it was is a little bit younger, so I'm going to go with probably the other one. Big third down for Laney here from the 34-yard line. Harris to throw for the second time in the half. Heaves it downfield and overshoots everybody. Yeah, he was looking. We haven't called the name of Laney. Does have an impressive, you know, big, big tight end, number 80, Anthony Wilson. He's only a junior, but overshot him that time. Yeah, the student section is filled in a little bit. Everybody got their concessions. But, but everything, it's just kind of calm. It's a, the, the, the stands are kind of calm. They're not used to this. It's, 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 they're not used to it. They're a little bit upset at the officials, but they've even been a little bit quiet about that. Starting I'm, to get a little nervous. They're starting to get a little nervous, yeah. maybe. And, I, you know, if, now Thompson got a good stop there. That's what they needed. And now let's see if they can get uh, the offense to get going here in the second half. This is what we talked about, though. They had games like this last, last year, and that was just waiting. And then Curry would make a big play, and they'd wake up. Yeah. And maybe it's Jordan Lane. Well, we said that at one time. Like, they looked like in the first game of the year last year against Burke County here, they looked like they were just waiting on Curry to make a play. And they looked very 
just lethargic, not into the game. And I know that's not the case, but that's what it felt like. The energy just wasn't there. Um, and tonight they started incredible. The energy was there, but Laney's game plan is the difference tonight. Yeah, ever, ever since Holmes returned that, that kick and got flipped over, yeah, that definitely got Laney going. That's still 16 minutes of football left to go, but you feel like Bulldogs need a spark of their own here on this drive. Yeah, they need to take a little momentum away from Laney and also maybe take a little of that confidence. Laney's just playing with a lot of confidence right now. Jeffrey on first down. Stays on his feet. And maybe that'll get the Bulldogs going. Big first down across midfield to the 44-yard line. Well, I've said it before, and it's not just because I predicted him to have a big year. Nathan and I have both talked about this. Get that kid the football. I mean, make, make him your worker. I know that's not your style. I know you like to preserve him as much as you can, but, man, get him the football more. Pick up a 15 for Jeffrey. Dogs work from the 45-yard line. See, even there when they hit him at the line of scrimmage, he's still able to get three or four yards, so nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they'll give him four. You know, do, you know give Laney a taste of their own medicine. Run it, run it, run it, and then maybe you hit a big play mm -hmm. with the pass. Like I said, Jakaius Jones in their last game threw three touchdown passes. Not as if he can't do it. Only had 36 yards passing in the first half of this one. And they're just going to keep going to Jeffrey. This time, Laney was ready for it. Yeah, nice play that time. Laney. Uh, Gerald Brown the third, a sophomore. Yeah, came up and made a nice play from his linebacker spot. Big third and six here. I was going to say, now after those two big runs from Jeffrey, suddenly it's third and six. He's going to come out. My guess is Lane's going to come in. He's more the pass catching back of the two. And here, I really think you're in four down yes, territory anyway. I was anyway. about to say that. I, I would, agree. I would, I would think the way that the offense is gone and a little bit of frustration where this is four down territory. Well, where you're, at, where you're at on the field, you're in a good spot on the field. And Michael Youngblood will take his first time out of this second half with 3.04 left to play. Gives us a chance to step aside and take a look at what's coming up on Jenny this Tuesday. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Join me next time for everything you need to know about the 20th annual Augusta U Brew and Q. Somerville Alumni Association President Kyle Scott will tell us all about this fun event for the whole community Tuesday at 1230 on Jenny. So Michael Youngblood gathers his troops with 304 to play. Well, they need – this is a big possession. This is a big, big third down. And four down territory, but you can't set yourself in this and get fourth and six. you got to either make it fourth and one or two or get the first down. You don't want to be in fourth and four or five or six or uh, obviously lose yards here. And, look, the way these two, of these, these two offenses have, have, have played tonight and battled back and forth, the next team to score – it's going to get late early for the other team. You know what I liked about that play, John? I love it. I love that they lined up in a passing formation and ran the football. Yep. That kept Laney guessing a little bit, and it opened up the lane yep. for sure. Nice play call by Michael Youngblood and his staff. Yeah, Sean yeah. Tiernan, the offensive coordinator. Like I said, it spread everything out. That You haven't seen the field open that much from Laney uh, really since the first drive, and it was because of the way they were lined up with no back in the backfield. They needed Jones. six. They got nine, and now Jones is going to go for it all, and it is complete, and, and it is a touchdown. And it's Kasai Jones again. He has been the player of the game on both sides of the ball. I believe that's who got it, Kasai Jones number 20. It is. Jones to Jones, and Thompson reclaims the lead. Well, wow, great answer by the Bulldogs. I mean, they're state champions for a reason, folks. They're not just going to give it away. Well, Kasai Jones, a touchdown catch, a block punt. He had the hit that flipped Holmes earlier. Mm -hmm. And he's and holding he's for hold the kick. He's going to hold on the PAT. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Emerson is now three for three on the night. Well, and that's big because we know Laney is probably going to go for two. Mm -hmm. 
32 yards on the touchdown catch. That was a really nice answer by the Bulldogs because things had really not gone their way and since that first drive other than the block punt, one play. That was a nice throw and catch. And really the design plays, the one before on third and six where they spread everybody out. They had no running back in the backfield. Laney was looking pass, and they ran sort of a quarterback draw for lack of, you know, maybe not a pure draw. but And then they drop back and throw the football the very next play after you're thinking, okay, they're not throwing it. Really nice play designs on both uh, both those plays by the Thompson staff. And it's not unlike what Laney did on that previous yeah. drive where, like you said, they drew, drew them in, drew them in. There were no defensive backs, and then Laney has the deep strike, and Thompson does the same thing. Yep. So back and forth we go. Bulldogs lead 21-14, still 2.30 to play in the third. And by the way, we mentioned on the scoreboard, Aiken looking for their first win. They were up 12-10 at halftime. Might not be getting it. Barnwell now has opened a 26-12 lead in that one. You can get that score many others tonight on Football Friday Night with Brendan. You bet as Vince Carter. Oh, hit and hit hard. Slam to the turf. And I believe that was number 15, Roderick Jackson, that got him. We'll take another look at the Bosby's instant replay. You're right, A.B. I mean, has our, play of, our, our hit of the night ever been somebody getting thrown? <laughs> it really wasn't a hit necessarily, but. It's first time for everything. Now the key here, let's see if Harris comes back out with the offense. He's had a little bit of time to maybe get his leg straight. He, yeah, he's on the field. There he is. So you can tell because he's got the blue shoes. The tip of his shoes are blue. So that's what I'm looking for. Now obviously, he's got the number five, but sometimes those numbers are. Look, look really close and also hard to see with all the other players. He'll keep it himself on first and not much. They'll give him two. He's still limping around. They looks like they've put some tape around that left knee. He's just kind of limping around here. And CJ Holmes is going to come in. Harris is going to come out. Or stay, oh, he's going to stay at receiver, it looks like. Got ourselves a football game here in Thompson. We do. Holmes back in at QB at 35 yards in the first half. He will keep here. And again, just trying to move behind that blocker. And again, now Thompson is really starting to plug that middle. Well, yeah, he followed the two blockers again. But this time, like you said, Thompson came with a host of tacklers, and they were able to push the pile back. John Sally White, one of the first in for the Bulldogs. <laughs> so Laney, third and seven from its 25. Yeah, they had all the momentum, and now all of a sudden Thompson scores, and Laney finds themselves in a really, really important third down here. Too many men. They're going to have illegal substitution. Oh, boy. 12 men in the huddle. Well, third and seven now. Third and 12. Third and 12. And the penalties are starting to pile up. I mean, they we mentioned the 18 they had a couple of weeks ago against Hepzibah, and they started off pretty clean, and then they had a little run of false starts, and they had their man in motion turning towards the, uh, you know, field of play before the ball was snapped a couple of times. Final minute of the third quarter. Line to make is the 32-yard line. And Holmes is not going to get there. Well, the flag is down. And I'm going to tell you, the guy who ended up making the tackle was not really the guy who made the play. Laney had a blocker out there on that screen, and I'm not sure who blew the play up. But they absolutely knocked the, the blocker into the back and just stopped that whole play. Big call here. Uh, Bulldogs will decline. The yeah. Blocking that a, penalty. That's the best series of the night defensively for Thompson. So now the momentum is completely shifted yeah. to the other side. It has. Well, watch this right here. Is he? 
And you know what? It was really actually it was a Laney player. It was Angus. It was Angus uh, Myrick who hit the Thompson player and stopped the play. Not the other way around. So Myrick trying to make a block, but he blocked him right into the path of the ball carrier. And Jordan Careful Jones here. there to clean it up for Thompson. Careful here. They've come. They've got one block for a touchdown. They've come close to blocking three more. And the Bulldogs are going to have great field position to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, Storm Hunt just let that one fall. It was a, it was a low liner punt. Usually, punt returners love coming up and getting those on a uh, on a line like that. But he just let it hit at the fifty, and it just only rolled a couple of yards. So they're going to get it, like you said, just shy of midfield at about the forty-eight. So here are the Bulldogs, and already up seven. Can really, not really salt this one away, but a 14-point lead in this game would be big, to say the least. Jones will keep on first down. He'll be across midfield. Close to a first down, Vincent Carter, the freshman. Grabbed him by an ankle. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So Thompson led by eight at the break. They lead by seven after three. 12 minutes left to decide this one. Game not long. That student section a little more relaxed than it was uh, about a half an hour ago. That's yeah, Thompson gets the score and they get the ball back in great field position. Leading by seven as we begin the fourth quarter. And it'll be another Bulldog first down inside the 40. Jeffrey once again. Yeah, Jeffrey's a totally different back than the electric. Uh, and then we got another injured player down for Laney. That's number eight, I believe. That's Jaden Shaw. But, you know, last year, Curry was a home run waiting to happen. You know, he he was, you know, anytime he touched the ball, he could take it to the house. Jeffrey's a different style runner. He's a, a you know, he'll, he, he's more of the LaShawn McCoy style. Uh, but, man, he is, he's tough. He's hard-nosed, physical. Man. That's Jaden Shaw, I believe. Yeah, it is Shaw. It is Jaden Shaw. And that is a massive piece of this Laney defense. It's wonder what's is that both coaches kind of talking to each other over the top of it? Yeah, yeah. young blood is out there. Ronnie Baker out there. It's interesting the kids down on the ground and yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. Animated discussion from Ronnie Baker to our officiating crew. Yep, we can sneak in the QBs by the quarter. Let's go um, for it. So Harris uh, of Laney um, is 3 of 11 for 46 yards and a touchdown. He has 18 rushes for 97 yards. Um, then we have um, Jones on Thompson's side is 4 of 10 for 68 yards and a touchdown and an interception and has added 20 yards on the ground. That was strange. Yeah, I don't – that was odd. Yeah, 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 something I haven't seen. I'm, I don't want to say how many years I've been doing this because y'all will pick on me, but <laughs> I, I've never seen that. You weren't here when the baseball stand was there, right? <laughs> no, I'm not quite that old. I'm getting there. Close. I might have seen this coach, though. This is the <laughs> trivia answer. <laughs> On first down, Jeffrey with a big hole. Inside the 25, pick up a 13. Yeah, he's starting to accumulate some yardage now. We were having the conversation during the break who could be the offensive player of the game and kind of scratching our heads a little bit. But, yeah, Jaffrey starting to pad the stats sheet a little bit. 12 for 90 now. Yeah, 12 for 90. So, again, he's averaging, you know, eight, almost eight yards of carry still. Flag in. Another flag in. Hold it on the offense. 10 yard penalty. We play it down. 76. And, and if you were wondering, 
<laughs> the penalty yeah. is on. Because Michael Youngblood said, who? <laughs> and he said, I'll tell you who. <laughs> uh, poor Dan Cummings just got called out on I TV. Know. It's like, man, they were praising me on defense. And, come uh, on. Uh, he's had such a big game for yeah. Thompson. But guilty of the infraction here, so first and 20 from the 35. Hey, I give him a ton of credit. When you see guys playing both sides of the ball a lot, you rarely see linemen. He's playing on the offensive line and the defensive line. And, not an easy task. Fresh set of legs in there for Thompson. And it pays off. Inside the 10, it'll be first and goal Bulldogs. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan Lane. Jordan Lane who had yeah. the touchdown. Big run. Yeah, Jordan Lane, super fast. Again, he's more of your home run hitter. And a little premature on the lights, go the, the yeah. LED light yeah. celebration. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering if I hit something <laughs> over here. Yeah. Lane, yeah. Lights are back on. Nathan thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. Roberts that had the touchdown earlier, not Lane, but it's first and goal Bulldogs from the nine. But now they. And it is Roberts in the backfield now. And Roberts will get the carry. Interesting. With the six. Interesting. Usually when Roberts comes in, he's getting the direct snap. But you give so much away there because you don't, you know, if you follow Thompson, you know he's probably not going to throw. He's going to run it. That time he was in there with the quarterback. Yeah, I wonder if they have a some kind of throw off of it, though, because yeah. every time now he's coming in and running that, Laney is blitzing the safety. Yeah. Well, Thompson now, the clock is also their friend as we're under 10 minutes to go. If, you know, yeah, you punch this in. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough sledding for Laney. Yeah, because they're, they're – game plan is to run the football and methodically move down the field. We have seen a Harris air it out, though. We have seen a, a big touchdown throw. Yeah, 36 yards out. Oh, he's got an arm for sure. Yes. Walking. Walking in for the six for the score. Six for Thompson. Yeah, Jacias Jones. Man, what a great story he is, too, John. And we all, you know, this story's been talked about, but for those that don't know, he had a a really big scare where he collapsed. It was found he had a heart ailment. He was away from the sport for a year, not just this sport, football and basketball. And not only does he come back, but he comes back to win the state championship in football, all region in basketball. Remarkable story. And there he scores the Thompson touchdown that puts them up by two TDs with less than 10 minutes to go in the game. And Sam Amerson, 4-4 four four on points after tonight. So, Jakias Jones with six, Amerson with the point after, and Thompson leads 28-14 with 9-23 left to play. Don't forget, coming up at the end, as mentioned, our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. We have the Powerade play of the game, the Georgia Health Department hit of the game. That's after the game, but we got 9, 23 left, 28, 14, Thompson. <laughs> Top rank Thompson leads Laney by 14, 28, 14 with 9, 23 left. Bulldogs trying to move to three and one on the season. And more importantly, again, this is the region opener for both teams as the freshman Vincent Carter on the return made the first one miss, but not the second one. Nice tackle. Yeah. By Leonard Jenkins, a sophomore himself. Well, they're finding, they're kicking it to him. So they're looking for him to kick. That's three times tonight they've kicked it right to the freshman. Hey, you just shared that there's a team in the area that's off to an incredible start. They're already at best in school history, and it's getting even better. John Hart, those Midland Valley Mustangs wow. are five and zero. Game's already over. The game is over. <laughs> got, wow. got, I'm getting several. <laughs> got nine. I'm getting several finals in. <laughs> we got like an hour left here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's the John goes to Athens tomorrow and wishes. <laughs> that's the John's got to be up at 4:30 in the morning. Comment. <laughs> Hey, you know what? There's a lot of folks in this stadium right now that are also <laughs> going to be on their way to Athens early in the morning, I assure you. 
Yeah, they played Westwood tonight, I think, in, in Columbia. And yep. 37 to 14. I, I won't give away any more finals, I promise. Yeah. But happy for them. Earl Chapman, I saw him tweet out today, and I love this. He said, hey, we're 4 0 for the first time in school history. We got so many seniors, whatever, college coaches. Yeah. Don't miss out on this. I don't even have to probably look, yeah. but Dunbar probably had 200 something yards and is probably going to be in the top, top 10 performance. This I week. would assume so, yes. Well, he's definitely over 1,000 now. Yes. yes, absolutely. Second and 13, Harris. Plenty of time. Now the pocket closes. Ooh. It evades one tackle. Wow. He'll get back just past the original line of scrimmage. That yeah. was a pretty impressive one and a half yeah, yard that, run. It was. He ran about. 12 to get it. <laughs> That's one of the better two or three yard runs you'll yeah, see. Yeah. But it's going to bring up third and seven. This is this is really big. This, this might be the ball. Yeah, you're almost yeah, getting to the point they're going to have to go for it on fourth down. I was going to say, yeah. if, if, if you don't get it here, it's going to be really interesting to see what Ronnie Baker decides to do yeah. because with less than eight minutes, are you going to be able to get the ball back? I close? think it's almost a no brainer if you get a few yards to go for it. If they get no yards and it's third and eight, from your own, what, 34? But, yeah, the time, I mean, you might have to. Michael Youngblood screaming at the defense, jumping up and down on the sidelines. Went over to talk to the official. Play goes off. Harris needs to get to the 42-yard line. He's got it. It's what? Holmes. First down into Thompson territory. There is a flag down back at the 34-yard line of Laney. What a beautiful throw by Harris, though. I mean, he threw that right over the top of the defender. Uh, it's going to be against Laney. Holmes' reaction says it all. Dominic Eubanks is our official. He'll he fill is. us in. No, no. Oh, play. they're waving wow. it off. What a that that was a great throw by Javaris Harris right over the defensive back to Holmes. Michael Youngblood is nonplussed on the <laughs> yeah, sideline. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Earlier, Kira down on the sideline said coaches, they were screaming. And, well, I imagine there's going to be some more screaming on that one. Now. I mean, the Harris kid, if they can continue to develop that passing game to <laughs> yeah. go with the power yeah. run, yeah, Laney's got something going in the, through region play. That's the best pass he's thrown. I mean, he, even that was even better than the touchdown. The touchdown was nice. He was on the run. The guy was wide open. That one, he had to lay it right over the top of the defender. There was a very small window to hit, and he hit it perfectly. Michael Youngblood called timeout. He's now having a, a, a how should we say, a, a, a meeting <laughs> with the officials. Well, I also want to give credit to the Laney offensive line. Not only have they done a great job tonight with that running game, but how long did Harris have to just stand there and throw? He had all yeah. night. I was worried we were going to get a legal man downfield yeah. penalty. Um, but Harris in the second half is three of three of four for 61 yards and a touchdown. And, again, maybe it's just getting that timing down. He's uh, he, This is somebody who has it. You know, he played a half of football last week. I think he mostly played defense. But uh, that young man has played a heck of a game tonight. It was a 27-yard pass from Harris to Holmes, and it set the Cats up inside the Thompson 40-yard line. And again, the officials step in. Well, the one thing if I'm Laney, all these slowdowns, uh, you, 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 I, I want that momentum I just had. And, mm -hmm. I almost want two plays called here because there's been such a lull that yeah. they can go quick. Well, we saw they, they you know, the, the clock management in the end of the first half was a little shaky. They got, they don't have a lot of time here. They got it because they yeah, need to going to throw again. Wow. And he's going to. Did he it's thread caught. the needle? He yeah, sure did. Caught. Holmes again, right on the sideline. Four for five. Again, I, I guess it's just – watch this. This is not an easy throw with a man in his face wow. and a defender there. Great throw and catch. And Holmes now, oh, certainly they've got a weapon to throw it to. We knew that. Another first down to the 29, 11 yards on that pass and catch. Laney, hey, we're not dead yet. Seven minutes and change left to play.
They will stay with the passing game. Now Harris forced to run. And he'll have another first down inside the red zone at the 18-yard line. May have got away with a little hold there. Uh, you know, there's hold on every play from what I hear. Yeah, it ain't a hold if they don't call it. <laughs> oh, man. Matter of fact, somebody that used to help us with the broadcast said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> Back in the day, he said it on national television, too. <laughs> Our buddy Ryan Bowers. Uh, 49 yards worth of offense in the last three plays for the Laney Wildcats. It was just shy of the first down, so it's second and one. They are in the red zone. Harris needing one, still mm. going to try to throw, and he might have gotten pushed forward for the first down. I think he did. That was dangerous. I don't think he saw that guy until the last second. Yeah, it was and Jordan that's a big Jones. guy. Yeah, Jordan Jones, he has been outstanding on defense tonight for Thompson. As a matter of fact, if not for Kasai Jones, he's probably your – defensive player of the game, but watch this. Jones never gave up on the play and came kind of from the blind side and caught him. It is a first down. Yeah, they got to be conscious of the time because you still have to score. Get it back. Get it back, yeah, and then score again. They, they have two timeouts. Save those, but get a little quicker here running this offense. Harris for the end zone. Oh, no. oh, and a big pick for Thompson. Guess who again? Gosh. And guess, guess who, who I mean, for Thompson? Because Cy Jones may have just locked up the McDonald's defensive player of the game. He is on every big play, it's number 20. He blocks a punt for a touchdown. He made a great catch in the middle of the field where he had to go up high to get it. He's got the touchdown catch. Here he gets the interception. Oh, man. And he, and he flipped a ball carrier as well. What a game. And more importantly for Thompson, Kasai Jones probably just put the nail in the coffin and locked this thing up for the Bulldogs as he gets, what do we got here, turnover chain? Yeah, he stole my necklace. <laughs> What's going on? Well, he's had a better night than you had. He has had a better <laughs> night, especially after I've missed this trivia coming yeah, up. You haven't you, you have flipped John over up here in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what the heck, why not? Let's answer our brand smart <laughs> USA trivia uh. question. All right. If you were with us earlier, the question, Luther, Welf, Luther Welch, easy for me to say, the late, great, legendary coach of Thompson, the winningest coach in Thompson history, 183 career wins in 19 seasons. Who was the second winningest coach in Thompson history? Well, I was thinking at first, last name Poss, Sonny Poss, but I'm not going to guess him. I think it's Paul Leroy. I think it's Paul. I think it's Leroy, the last name for sure. I think the first name's Paul. It, you are correct, Paul Leroy, uh, but who won a state title here as well. But um, it's not the answer. The answer is? <laughs> Newt Rockney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, oh, my gosh. The answer got is it. Flash, Flash Gordon. L.C. Flash Gordon. I saw was, his movie. Oh, yeah. Back <laughs> in the 80s. <laughs> nope, different Flash Gordon. Oh, okay. Not the closer for the Red Sox either. <laughs> He had 100 wins exactly over 14 seasons from 1941 to 1956, including two region championships in 51 and 54. Took him to the semis both years. Well, but I, t I said I ran into John Barnett. That picture, by the way, courtesy of the great histor the book about Thompson football history, Ghosts of the Brickyard. If you haven't picked up your copy, it is fantastic. Do so. Uh, but I talked to John Barnett on the way up to the booth tonight, and he just happened to mention Flash Gordon and said not only did he coach Thompson in two different tours because he actually went and served in World War II oh, yeah, for yeah. a couple of years in the middle. So, well, I'm, I'm proud that I knew Paul Leroy coached in the 60s and won some championships. You were very close. That, <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, that probably would have been my guess as well. <laughs> I wouldn't so. even have had a guess. I couldn't have named yeah. the coach. <laughs> and Thompson in absolutely no hurry now. Four and change. And with a 14-point lead and a third down upcoming. Well, the only thing good about that, that means we keep the trivia thing. Did you say that's you were, Yeah, you well, I didn't see what you I, 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 don't think, I don't think the folks from Brandsmart USA will let yeah, me well, get rid of the hey, trivia uh, question. Hey, Nathan, uh, I missed it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> hey, I, I was, just want those folks to get the did, full uh, advertisement. Uh, I didn't want you to get it and then have some <laughs> idea that he was going to start asking me trivia questions. <laughs> I love that picture, by the way. Yeah. Oh, oh wait. Ball comes whoa, out. Whoa, How about whoa, whoa. this? We're sitting here talking. Well, this everybody, down. and it, the, the reaction of the players on the field tells me he was down because nobody seems to be very excited about that. Wait, this is, is this the same player? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the second time that he's kind of gone down. And it's weird. He lays Shaw again, and he lays, and he looks still, and then he his head pops up, and he's and now he's fine. He's okay. All right, good. Well, yeah, the pick again that book goes to the Brickard, and I don't get commission. I'm just saying it's yeah. a really nice book. It it 
th there's so many pictures like that through. I knew when I came up with the trivia question, I'd be able to find a picture of him. It took me about 30 seconds. Flash Gordon. I'll never miss that one again. I promise you that. Sorry I let you down. I should have had a copy of the book <laughs> with us. I do have a copy at home, by the way. As do I. Autograph. Shame on me, though, for not knowing that. All right, so now Laney gets it back, yeah, and ooh, now it's – Low snap, whoa. too. Now it's really – I mean, the clock is – You've got to be conscious of the clock, and you've got to be going fast. you got to throw to the sidelines. Yeah. You, you really don't have – you've got two timeouts, but – you know, they played a good football game tonight. You know, even if it ends right at this score, people are going to say, oh, you know, Thompson. But they're not going to realize this game was a close game. I mean, Laney had the momentum. They tied it at 14. They had the ball. And then Thompson, to their credit, you know, they're their championship caliber team. To their credit, they were able to make that drive where they threw the touchdown pass to Kasai Jones and, and, and really kind of a – and then, and then Ja'Kai Jones, who threw the touchdown, also gets a touchdown run. Harris does throw to the sideline, and the good news for Laney is that stops the clock. Well, that's the question, too. You've got Jacias Jones with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. You've got Jeffrey with almost 100 yards. Uh, we know who the defensive I, – I, I, it's hard to hide it. I mean, Kasai Jones has been all over the field, but – Going to be really difficult selecting an offensive. Under three minutes now. Harris through the middle of the field. Thompson's going to be fine with that, even though it is going to be a first down. They'll finally drag him down. Well, inside the 30 at the 28. The clock's going to continue to run once the chains are set. First to 10 from the 29 yard line. Again to the sidelines, and nice play made on that far side by Jamarian Barnes. 25 tackles, the leading tackle on this team coming in. Continues to run with 212. Harris again over the middle. Clock stops with 205. Don't forget, football Friday night coming up at 1135 over on WJBF News Channel 6. We showed you some of those big matchups in the scoreboard at halftime. Brendan Robertson, Graham Lee will have all the highlights, scores, reaction. AB and I will have a recap of this one. 11.35 over on WJBF News Channel 6. And a big third down now here for Laney because you're in two, obviously two down oh, territory, yeah, is, but if you, yeah, it's basically but if you don't here. get the first down on one of these next two downs, game's over. And Harris is not ready for to, to get on the bus just yet as he'll pick up the first. Under two minutes left now. Gives a chance to thank our crew. Spent all day here at the Brickyard setting up for you once again this week. Our director, Kyle Thomas, replay Ben Price on graphics. Josh Recor is also helping out directing as well. Audio, Jeff Singleton on our cameras this week. Katron Huji, Kat Gingry, Jake Arnold, and Gary Nipple. Working the sidelines for us tonight, Krishana Roebuck, Taylor Newton. The red cap is actually Krishana Roebuck. Got to ad lib here and tell you that's who it was. Uh, live truck operator Philip Scott continues to pinch hit and do a great job for us. Keeping us on the air back at Master Control. Jarrett Ledger and our production manager Lauren Fitzgerald and our production timer making her game night live debut, I think. Ashlyn Williams doing a fantastic job. Blaney on second and 10. Ooh, did he oh. catch that? No, he oh, got wow. through his hand. That was that little back shoulder throw, and it was oh, that would have been a touchdown yes. if it were a little bit better throw. It was CJ just Holmes to the outside, yeah. Almost made one of the plays of the night, maybe of the year, if he'd come down with that. 
If, you know, if, he'd have, if he'd have turned quicker, he might have been able to get to the outside and get that. I like the throw. I like the play and everything, but you know, they got to get in the end zone here pretty quick if they have any chance. 75 seconds left. Snap is wide. Harris corrals it. Throws. It is batted out of bounds. Clock stops at the minute nine. And now this is his last hope for the Wildcats, who will travel to Butler next week. That is an improved Butler team, by the way. Yeah. And Thompson, boy, it doesn't get any easier for them. They'll hit the road for Sandersville and take on Washington County. See the two standouts for Laney, C.J. Holmes and Javaris Harris. And assuming things stay the way they are for the next 68 seconds, as I believe Laney is going to take its final timeout. Yeah, but assuming things stay the way they do, you Thompson fans can enjoy the encore presentation of Game Night Live coming up at high noon on Sunday over on WJBF. News Channel 6. We'll step aside. So Thompson, 68 seconds away from not only going 3-1 and one on the year, but much more importantly, starting in the region play 1-0. and oh. Last hope for Laney. And it is broken up. And Thompson is going to hang on, trying to get a number and see who broke it up for Thompson. Still and that not. was... Yeah, Storm Hunt. Yeah, he had eight interceptions last year, led the area, made a great play on the ball that time. Watch this. Is the play, yeah, it was a good pass. It's just he jumps in front and makes a good play. Oh, yeah, that was a perfect pass. Really nice play. Still almost yeah. Yeah, ended up in the hands of Holmes. Hunt already has an interception this year as well. And so Thompson will take over with 102 left to play, leading by 14 and Laney with just one timeout left. And a reminder, the off McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game coming up. Powerade play of the game and the Georgia Health Department hit of the game all coming up on the post-game show in one minute and two seconds. Georgia, South Carolina, I'm not going to ask you who you like to have a feeling I know, but 28 points? <laughs> don't love the 28 points. I don't love the 28 no. points either. <laughs> no. Well, I just we don't really we haven't we don't know what Carson Beck's going to do in that kind of game. You know what I mean? That's the question mark. First so. test, re real, it real is. test. It is. It is. And you know, uh, South Carolina. I'd say this. Of course, I, I, I graduated from Georgia, but I try to say as impartially as I can. This is the quietest I've heard Gamecock people leading into this game. Oh yeah, because I'll since. say it. They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> His hey, email. His email address hey, is. Hey, Georgia's not far. No, well, no, I. Ain't, listen, well, at least Georgia. Everybody has Georgia them. fans, and they've won a couple national titles now. I can say Georgia fans. I, I call all college football fans are delusional, <laughs> but at least Georgia's has a history. Like South Carolina fans, every year, think they're you know, think they're going to do great, but they've never done great. Oh, I don't our, get director it. Kyle, our director, our director Kyle Thomas Sorry. is about to come up to the booth. All right. Yeah. Well, you know there you go. I. <laughs> Nathan Edwards at no 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 no. I, you know, it's just all, the reason I say they're quiet though. The last yeah. time they were this quiet, they South are. Carolina won. Oh yeah. And I, I every time Carolina fans get this quiet, it scares well, me. Well, they a finished bit. strong last year, and and Spencer Rattler, we saw in the Tennessee game. I mean, he's capable of getting hot and playing great, and they're capable of getting hot and playing great. And that's why I said I don't, I wouldn't give up the twenty eight points at all. I would take South Carolina with the points, but for entertainment purposes. For entertainment purposes sure. only, of course, but. Um, because, again, we, we know we've seen Spencer Rattler in big games perform. We, ha we haven't seen that yet from Carson Beck. We don't know what that's going to look like. You, even after two national titles, John, I still have too much Larry Munson in us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I'm the if, biggest if, pessimist if, ever. If, I if, think Florida State's a 27-point favorite. I think we're going to lose to Boston College tomorrow. Yeah. So, I, I, know, victory, I know how you feel. Victory formation for the Thompson Bulldogs. And that should do it. Well, Thompson got a test tonight, but they I gotta give him credit though. They did answer. I love Ronnie Baker's game plan. They executed it really, really well. 
But in the end, Thompson was able to make enough plays to get the win. It wasn't pretty. It's not going to be something the coaches are going to be thrilled with. They're going to be a little disappointed probably in some of the things. But in the end, the bottom line is, like you said, they're 1-0 in the region, mm -hmm. and they got the W. The light show begins here at the Brickyard. It's 119 miles to be exact from the Brickyard to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And Thompson just took another couple of miles off that yeah. trip as they try to get back to Atlanta and a state championship. Yep, it's nice those championship games are going to be back in the bins where they belong. Oh, yeah. yep. yep, where they belong. So Thompson, a winner, 28-14. to 14. The Bulldogs move to 3-1, and 1-0 one, and oh in Region 4-2A. And Laney falls to 1-2-1. One, and one. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with the post-game show, hopefully here from the victorious head coach of the Thompson Bulldogs, Michael Youngblood, and the post-game show is next. The celebration continues here at the Brickyard as the Bulldogs of Thompson move to 3-1 and one on the year in open region play 1-0 and oh with a 28-14 victory over the Laney Wildcats. Time now for our... Georgia Health Department hit of the game. We had a few to choose from. Yeah, a couple nominees tonight. It'll be interesting to see what the truck chose. I think, is it going to be oh, yeah. the flip? No, it's going to be the slam to the ground here. Oh, man, great play oh, by yeah. Jackson. Yep. Roderick Jackson. Very nicely done. And that brings us to our Powerade play of the game. Well, we'll take another look at it one more time. It's yeah, worth Roger, seeing twice. Roderick Jackson with a great play. Like it. In our play of the game, yeah, I, that makes sense. It's going to be the touchdown pass, I believe, across the middle. Yeah, you see him there. He's wide open, uh, Kasai Jones. And that really sprung Thompson. So Jones to Jones for our power eight play of the game. And now back down to Kier Goldstein. And Got the victorious head coach, Michael Youngblood, and our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Kira. Yeah, guys, we're going to start with our offensive and defensive players of the game really quick. Offensively, Trey Trey Jeffrey, 97 yards rushing. Can you tell me what was working so well on offense today? Oh, uh, man, got to give all credit to the front line and God, man. Without them boys, man, would nothing that be possible, man. I just want to say thank, thank you to my whole O-line, man. Them boys, the GOAT. How did you guys really pick up the pace and get things going more intensely in the second half? We understand, <laughs> we understand that the goal, man, we knew that this second half was so important because this is what it has to close it out, man. We knew that Lane is such a good team to the point like we can't get on no leeway, so we had to go ahead and close everything out. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We'll have a plaque for you. And then we'll move over to Kasai Jones, our defensive player of the game. A blocked punt return for touchdown, an interception, and a touchdown on offense. Can you tell me what was working so well for you on defense tonight? You know, it, just, it starts with the D-line first. You know, they getting pressure on the ball. Then our linebackers also getting pressure on them. And the other DBs playing on uh, DB well. And that's what um, got me open, got me the ball on that pit return. Can you walk me through your mindset and what happened uh, on that blocked punt return for a touchdown? I mean, that was incredible. Can you just walk me through your mindset? So, usually we did we did block. We did block, so I, um, I ensured a kick. But I seen Tez or somebody block the kick, and I just picked it up and scored it and scooped it. Well, congratulations. That plaque right there is for you. I'm going to have Coach slide over here. Coach, come talk to me real quick. This crowd loves you. The energy in here tonight was electric. What was it like for your team to come out and get the victory tonight? I mean, it, it's our fans. Um, it's electric here now. We have we have a, a great fan base. We try to take the high school experience. We got our DJ going, and we got a production team, and uh, Mr. Wesley Walker and our band that does a good job, and our cheerleaders. It's a total team effort to get this atmosphere pumping, and that's why we like to play at home. And then these kids that we have up here right now, and that's behind me, they really bought into being a team effort. And that's what you have to have in these situations. I'm just so proud of these kids for how they played tonight. What adjustments did you make at halftime to really leverage that mental game and that team effort? 
Well, I told them at halftime that I thought that they was getting a little bit of tired and that we had to do a good job of finishing blocks and executing our offense and our defense. We had a little mental lapse right there in the third quarter defensively, but I thought overall we kept competing. And when we kept competing, I thought it gave us a chance to win. We made a few adjustments on some blocking schemes that we felt like would give us a chance to, you know, if we needed a first down to keep the chains moving, and we were able to execute those plays. A great way to start region play. Thank you so much, Coach. I'm going to let you go celebrate with your team. Right, John and A.V., we're going to send it back up to you. Kara, thanks. Congratulations to Coach and our McDonald's Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week. One more order of business before we let you go. We got our final QBs by the quarter, as always, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, Harris for Laney. Um, end of the night, he had 22 rushing attempts for 110 yards. Um, he, he threw the ball much better in that second half, but with them trying to come back there late at the end, he ended up 7 of 19 for 58 yards, a touchdown and interception. Jones on the Thompson side was 4 of 13 for 68 yards, a touchdown and interception, and 35 yards on the ground, and also a rushing touchdown. All right, so Thompson a winner, 28 to 14. Next week, we will be at the Briar Patch in Evans, Georgia, for Greenbrier against Aquinas. Kind of an interesting matchup because those two teams are sharing a home stadium this year with Aquinas' new stadium uh, under under construction but uh, at the moment it is uh, Aquinas is ranked number six in class A at 3-0 and coming into the night. Yeah, kind of gutsy to make your homecoming game against the top 10 team in the state yeah. so that'll be interesting. Greenbrier was 0-4 <laughs> coming in so that's next week we'll see you then in the meantime for Kira Goldstein on the sideline Nathan Edwards our statistician AB up here in the booth thank you for watching John Hart saying see you next week from Greenbrier.